and welcome back to the sql practice problem series this video is part of a playlist on youtube where you can actually watch the entire thing and i basically uh, solved by myself a series of practice problems for sql it's been uh, very fun so far actually very interesting i i beginning to find a lot of my uh, shortcomings related to sql and considering that i actually do have a day job as a database administrator i am actually planning to address them uh, correctly we may say in the future so okay so let's continue the So here we are. We are on the advanced problem section. This is the last section of the book. Okay. So we are on number 32, high value customers. We want to send all of our high value customers a special VIP gift. We are defining high value customers as those who had made at least one order with a total value, not including the discount, equal to ten thousand dollars or more we only want to consider orders made in the year 2016. Hmm. okay so this seems to be a a, a warm-up uh, problem here so the strategy that i'm going to do here is the same as before i'm going to divide this problem into subsections and begin building from from the most simple query onward so expected result is going to be the customer ID, company name, order ID, and total order amount. Okay, and fill less yet the necessary fields for all orders made in the year 2016. Don't bother grouping yet, just work on the where clause. You will need the customer ID, company name from customers order ID from orders and quantity and unit price from order details order by the total amount of the order and the sending order you should have something like this okay this gives you the total amount for each order in detail they are basically giving me the answer already may like to skip something of this the fields at the customers and order level are Need to be grouped by how will you filter in on the sum let's get back a little bit because i feel like uh, the hint is actually solving a lot of things so i may like to skip reading that and just uh, read it if i need to if i actually need to if i get stuck okay so let's see So here we are let's check out the git repo and see where are we okay so this is the git repo this uh this section here was the introductory problems and i am currently on the uh intermediate problems the master branch i already deleted the intermediate problems branch i'm going to create a new branch here just for this let's check out to a new branch and the new branch is going to be called advanced problems There we go, we are on a new branch. Let's see. There we go. We are on a new branch here. And let's create a new file here. Okay. Let's just do it right here. Wait. Okay. 
advanced problems sql yes and there we go we have a new file here let's do our first commit there we go this is the new file copy that let's add this file into the rip into the station directory you can see here is now the stage for, and it's ready for commit let's commit it let's commit with a message of Okay, let's clear the screen and uh, there we go. So we are right here on top. There we go. So we are right here. A new branch, a head of master. Okay, so clear the screen and let's go to data grip. Begin working. Yeah. Uh, you can do oh. nice. Oh, nice. Okay. So well, let's open the file. I wonder if it's somewhere around. There we go. Okay. You'll have uh, the ADV now. Server. And uh, how do I set? You already have one. What is it? Did I just lost it? Hmm. Mine. Let. Well, let's just configure it again. Well, anyway. If it's fourteen. I don't remember the default uh, port for this. Okay, it's going to be this one here. Okay, I already know. Instance, I do remember it was. There we go, it's this one. Don't use this. Administration and password is one, two, three. That's the connection. There we go. And there we go. Localhost. Close this. Okay. Call default. And let's choose the Norwin SPP database. And we are set to go. Able. Oh, okay. I'm not uh, actually actually watching. You must going to need this one here. Uh, I don't. What is key? I do I need? Buy that. There we go. So here we are with, our, with all our tables here. Okay, so we are ready to go. Uh, 32 high value customers.
Okay. So we want to send all of our high value customers a special VIP gift. We're defining high value customers as those who had made at least one order with a total value. Okay, so before we continue reading, let's begin with a simple query here. So we are going to need to select uh, everything from customers. There we go. So we are getting something like this. Okay. So here are our customers. Yet we need to include more information that is included in other tables. Let's see which ones. Okay, we're defining high value customers as those who had made at least one order with a total value, not including the discount, equal to 10,000 or more. So I'm not going to be working directly into this query here right now. I want to do a simple query here. Give me everything from the orders table. Let's take a look here. As you can see here, uh, this is just the header for every order. And let's do, yet I don't really know uh, here. I don't see an amount. Sometimes in some, in some databases, the total amount of the order is included here. Uh, I don't really recommend that. So, and it's not done here. So thank you. Because that should be calculated anyway. And not stored in the actual database table. So we had some orders. Oh, and we are also going to be asking order details. There we go. So here are the every entry on every order. So the way this is going to work is basically uh, orders and order details are related to each other. So we may actually uh, create a join here. I'm going to create an alias OD and an alias as O here. And the condition to the join is going to be this one. So here, I'm joining the information from the orders table, and I'm including the information on the order details table. Okay, I'm not doing anything with customers yet. I'm just trying to establish the explicit uh, relationships between the order, the orders table, and the order details table. So now I'm going to filter by some fields only. Uh, in this case, we're getting order ID and total amount. As you can realize, I'm not using um, an aggregate function to get this. So first I'm going to add the order ID and the uh, and, and some kind of amount here. So let's see. Order dot order ID. And let's see what amounts there are on we have here unit price and a quantity okay and a discount i guess discount is not going to be considered not including discount perfect no what i'm going to do i'm going to multiply the unit price amount uh, <coughs> by the quantity amount here that's going to be another field let's just this uh front clause down here and here let's get to work so unit amount unit price uh what is the times and quantity and this is going to be known as wait actually you know what let's do it the notation uh, that is going to be used on the, on the book Total order amount. Uh, let's let's call it just total. I think this is this is correct here. There we go. So as you can see here, I'm getting 
duplicates on the order ID here. So this means that I'm getting three items on, for this particular order here. And this is the, the total amount for each of the items. Okay. So now I may actually begin my, my grouping here. Let me see if it's going to be valuable to include the customer information on this step first. Uh, there is a customer ID and a company name. Uh, let's do this, this, step pre this previous step first. I'm going to be showing customer ID and company name. So here, customer ID and company name, we have this. Now, I'm planning to include this information with this query down here. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to move these fields up here. Let's get the front clause down here. So the fields that I just pasted here don't, does not exist on the customer's table yet. So I'm going to do a join here. There we go. And customers is going to get an alias too, just because. There we go. So to avoid uh, future or current, uh, how do you call it? Ambiguity, they're going to be pasting the table name this case, the, the alias for the customer's table ahead of every single field, just to make it clearer. I'm going to be doing the same here, order detail, and order detail, just to be clear. And I may actually like to make this a little, uh, it's not really readable. Let's get rid of some space here. So let's create a nice list. Hey, there we go. Oh, wait. There we go. So, so far so good. Let's try. Red syntax near or D. Okay, order ID. Let me see what it, what, oh wait, never mind. I, I didn't finish the join here. Okay, there we go. See what auto completion did. So here we are. So now we are combining the three tables, the customer information, the order information here on the order ID and the order detail information on the calculation of the total for every item. And you can see here, we do have on the, on the first three rows, we have a single order. So my next task is going to be to actually sum these three values and get a single row for every order. Uh, this is going to be done by something called an aggregate function. And here is where we are going to find some complexity. So, so let's take it slowly and firmly. So we do have total here. Yet I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to replace this by an aggregate function here. So what we are going to do here, let's comment this code first. So let's get rid of it. Now, I'm going to be, the only field I'm left with is this one here, total order amount. So what I'm going to do here, I want to sum all of these three, and I'm going to be uh, using an aggregate function, which requires me to include a group by class. So let's do that first. I'm going to be grouping by, uh, oh wait, let's, let's do it, uh, the field first. So here, what I'm going to be doing is sum. I need to sum. I need to tell it what to sum. 
uh, this field is unit price by quantity so i may actually like to include all this operation inside like this there we go so what what is going to happen is it's going to be a still doing the multiplication here to get the single amount for every row and yet it's going to sum all of this okay if i try to run this is going to fail because i need to add a group by clause to this query now so the query may know how to actually group this so let's put by and i'm going to choose the two fields here unit price and quantity I think I, I may do something wrong here, so let's try it out. Yeah. It says customer's customer ID is invalid in the select list because it's not contained in either an aggregate function or by the group by clause. Yes, I need to actually add it to the list. Oh, I'm doing something wrong here. May actually, you know what? Uh, let's try to add it first here. I don't think this is going to look clean. So let's try it out anyway. And the customer's company name. And obviously, I believe that the it's going to be a long list. Okay. There we go. Seems like I'm getting the right amount here. I'm getting a single row for every client, single row for every order, and the sum is being done here. So let's check out the book. The quick, quick stop. Oh wait, never mind. I actually need to include the where's the where clause with the filtering. But I believe I, I am on the right track here. So first, let's uh, make this uh, group by less readable. And there we go. So the list is, is readable now. Okay. Let's use this, it's the same thing. So now what we need to do is begin the filtering. If I recall in, in a previous exercise, uh, I may need to actually, well, never mind. I think, I believe that I can actually uh, just filter this list by the amount, be done with it, let's check. So right after the join and before the group buy, I may like to do a, a where clause. Oh wait, this is an anonymous field. So in order for me to, let me see if I can assign um, an alias here. Total order amount. going to be the the oh wait. okay the total order amount is this one here now we are going to add the filtering with a where clause and the total no don't mind that I, I guess I'm going to actually need push this here just as it is where all of this, where the sum, where the total order amount is greater than or equals $10,000. Can I do this? Yes, I can't. Okay, never mind, $10,000 right now, happen. An aggregate may not appear in the where clause. I did have this problem before. So I wonder if 
I do this. Then substitute the aggregate function here. This is this going to work? Valid column name. Uh, it doesn't exist yet. Okay, so here here we have the first the first problem here. Let's see. So total order amount does not exist as uh, in the where clause. So maybe I remove the where clause and customer down here. Start inside the join for the order details because the the value the total order amount uh, fields are contained on this table I'm going to click i'm going to add an and and put the filtering right here uh, okay so try again it still doesn't exist at this point neither hmm. what can we do then total order amount yes i cannot do this directory heat either and uh what can we do here it's not recognizing this because it doesn't exist yet and i cannot do total order amount let's check out the book see the hint okay it's joining the orders the amount is equal to quantity price and uh, join the orders okay total order amount is equals to the sum okay i'm right here i guess a couple joins where clause i don't see the fields at the customer and order level to be grouped by the total order amount sum how would you filter on the sum to get orders of put to put it straight into the where clause no cannot question is why Lee I did have notes somewhere Don't remember how to check out for the notes. There we go. Without the joins, the filters on the where clause are applied after you join. Hmm. Okay. I get this. Back. So basically i'm going to be omitting the filtering by the amount first let's try to solve something easier the where clause I'm going to be adding this now let's remove this i'm not going to be working with that yet the where clause get the order date between Uh, uh, oh wait to be between 2016 01 01 and 2017 01 01 there we go so we are filtering by the all the orders on 2016 so so far so good so the only thing i'm missing now is how do I filter total order amount? Can I actually add it here? I already tried and I failed. It doesn't work. So if I say, for example, oh wait, I cannot do this. It's unable to resolve the column 
total order amount why hmm. time to google it Aggregate function in SQL where clause. Oh wait a minute. There is a a having uh I, I think I already did this a, a long time ago. There we go, yeah. This is it. Yeah, I, I'm getting uh my memory back here. Yes. I need after the group by I need to add a having clause and there I can actually use uh, aggregate functions. There is actually uh, this this exercise here, this example, pretty similar to what I actually did. So let's get back. After the after the growth by clause, let's add a having. Wonder if I can just put this here. Doesn't exist yet. Cool. Copy and paste the aggregate function again. Remove this. So I cannot have it in the where clause. I need to add a having clause. Here, I'm going to be adding the 10,000 condition here. There we go. That's it. Okay. This was actually uh, quite hard. I didn't have the answer in, in a minute in my mind, so never mind. I guess this is done. Uh, let's add it to the repo then. Okay, and the cabin. I guess I could actually down here. Let's try to format this. I actually wonder if SQ if uh, data grid had some uh, formatting the quick uh, oh reformat file format code let's see what it does there we go eh, I guess it's fine I don't really like how it looks like it looks quite weird actually okay why is Presentation so far behind. Yes, use some different lines, I guess, for it to work properly. Okay, let's try again. It does the same thing, so I don't really. Uh, I don't know. Let's try to fix this. I don't really like how it looks. The joints look they are pretty far behind. Where close? Yeah. Right here. Wonder if I could yes, I can access. Yeah. This may seem uh, like not important, but it is actually really important for me to be able to read this easily in the future. Maybe someone else actually. Okay, so let's add it to the repo then. Add advanced problems. No, another commit. There we go. Uh, let's copy the title for the problem. And there we go. 
Hold on. We are facing some sophistication on these uh, problems now. These are not easy. A fifty-three dot. When is next? High value customers total orders. Okay. So what do I need to do? The manager has changed his um, his mind. Instead of requiring uh, that customers had at least one individual orders totaling ten thousand dollars or more, he wants to define high value customers as those who have orders totaling fifteen thousand or more in two thousand sixteen. Okay. How will you change the answer to the problem above? Better result. Okay. Total order amount. So the difference here is that every single row is not a single order. It's the total amount of all the previous orders on the on the year. And it's that uh, actually it sums up to fifteen thousand or more. They are added to the list here. I guess we are going to build up from the previous exercise, obviously. So let's let me copy this here. Okay, so we are be we are going to be working here. Let's see. So instead of a single order, it's going to be total orders. Okay, hint. This query is almost identical to the one above. There is just a few lines you need to delete or comment uh, to group at a different level. So here's the hint. Group at a different level. Group by. Here's where I need to work. Huh? Hmm. So the total order amount, total order amount on this case is for a single order. Now I need to put by on a different level according to the, wait, realize this. And this. There we go. So let me see. He's talking about removing lines or comment them out. Here I will say that instead of grouping them at this level here, I need to add them here. Actually, am I going to be using uh, any of these fields on an aggregate function? If I remove it from the group by, that may not be a good idea. Okay, let's think. Right now, okay, I have a single order here. I may need to change the group by or avoid uh, singling out single orders and include every single order on the year. How do I do that? Okay. So First, this is going this is going out. We're going to remove this later, right now, not right now. We may like to remove the group by clauses. The point of hmm. Think. I guess that the hint refers to me removing some of the group by sentences. 
my first guess is going to be the root by unit price and quantity because I don't really need them I want to actually run okay it still runs get the order ID field messing me up I think why because if I group by order ID I'm getting a single uh, row for every order ID that is this means that every order wait order ID need to go to Okay, so I cannot remove order ID because the select list because it's not containing either aggregation. Okay, question Do I need to show order ID? I don't think. Customer ID, company name. Okay, let, let's, uh, <coughs> let's change the fields being used. What's here? What fields are being used? Customer ID, company name, total order amount. Yes, I'm going to remove this one. I cannot actually use it. Is that it? Oh my god, I did it. Thanks. Wait. Me no. Oh, never mind. I include in a. At, uh, here on the sum but this is working differently now because total order amount is not including just a single uh, order it's including every single order on the year uh -uh, what was the 50,000 okay. so 15,000 under actually correct they have a lot markets 42 is this being ordered by something i don't know oh i don't results or why let's check out if there is an order clause here uh, Seems to be ordered by this seems to be the highest value. Perhaps is that. Let, let's read the manager. Customer at least one individual orders totally. Has to define high value customers as those who it doesn't explicitly explicitly say that it needs to be ordered, but I think it's order for for the values here. Forty thousand, twenty-four thousand, twenty-two. Yeah, I, I think it's actually uh, ordered by the total order amount. Uh, so let's try adding that. Yeah. Order by. Uh, please tell me. Oh, thank you. And I'm having white clover. Oh. Oh wait, uh, I forgot about the, I want the order to be this, from the biggest value to the lowest value. There we go, I think. Stop. So, yes, got it. Yeah, I was getting nervous there. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so basically, uh, if you want to actually remove a field from the group by clause, you cannot, as you may no longer use it on the on the select clause on the list of the fields that you're going to list or in a, I I was able to remove this unit and unit price and quantity because I am actually grouping by a, a higher level in this case by customer ID so and company name so these two basically uh, belong to the same table. So for every single company or customer ID, 
uh, there is going to be just one row and at that level all the orders are going to be summed up in a single row for every client so okay that's it save this oh my god these are really hard problems actually really rusty okay let's copy this and we are getting into the hard problems now okay Oof. 34 high value customers with discount okay oh yeah there is a, a discount field actually There we go. What do I need to do? Uh oh, oh, okay. Change the above query to use the discount when calculating higher value customers. Order by the total amount which use the discount. Seems like an easy change, I think. Wait, expect the result. Okay, total without discount. I already have this. These three fields, I already have them. I'm just going to need to rename uh, the total amount for uh, with totals without discount, and then totals with discount. So let's rename this field first, the previous query. It's pretty much going to be the same query here. Okay, we are going to be working on that. I'm going to remove this is not required for this exercise i'm going to leave the comments on the previous one just to know what happened there yet i don't need those comments on the new one here so total order amount i'm going to rename you to totals without discount i wonder if i can do this Oops, no. The Lord of the Town. Oh, yeah, because I uh, actually changed that. If I can do totals without this can. To do it with this. I don't really, uh, I'm not really good remembering syntax, so I pretty often uh, doubt myself by doing things. Never mind. Total without discount. Okay. Fine. Total without discount is going to be this one here. Now I need to add total with this. So here, customer. Let's check out the discount field. That should be order details field. Field value. This is going to be represented as percentage. Look, this can see. Okay, so I guess it's a value from zero to one using decimal points. So I guess this means 50% discount, 50% uh, discount, 5% discount, and so on. So I guess that's how it works. How this works. So let's see that. Okay, without discount. Typo here. Ah, 
now check it out okay totals without discount i need to show i need to change this for the let's add a new feature with discount so I'm going to need to replace this or I say add maybe okay so how the discount is a percentage for example 2.50 this is going to be equal to 50% discount okay how do I calculate this Better. So, how do I calculate? This is the value. This is the amount. Okay. This is the amount. I may just multiply it. Exactly. Uh, by the discount the order detail count yet this is not going to be the answer because the only thing I'm doing here is getting the actual value the discount amount the 50% of this is this multiplied by this Okay, so, so far so good, I guess. And then, I may need to move this amount. This is the 50% discount. Yes, I can do some. Yes, then. It looks pretty messy. I, I believe I'm doing something really wrong here. Let's try it out anyway. Ah. National. So what I'm trying to do here, let's let's move this down here. Here. Going to so according to me, all of this represents the actual value of the 50% discount or whatever discount it is and I'm going to add this 50% oh no actually need to Ooh. there we go this is the 50% amount of the 50% discount amount calculation is here now I'm going to remove this amount to the actual price here I wonder if I can actually just uh, this that is is this valid have incorrect set oh because I removed the actual never mind parenthesis missing okay Invalid column name, so it doesn't exist yet. I guess I'm gonna do that. Just control my way down. There we go. Okay, let's see. So this amount is less than this. Hey, actually, I, I'm not really good at math. You can clearly see, so bear with me here. <laughs> this, I am a, a, a little ashamed. Fine. Let's try out something here. Let's pick a, some values here. Paste them. Uh, code. I guess it's okay. Okay, thank you. Now here, 
to be equals this is the total amount minus then i can just type 50 really bad at excel as you can minus 50 you know what happens here? the same thing just in how do i yeah this is a yeah shame but ah, never mind don't really care Where... No. How do percentages work at? Let's try this. Define this as a problem. Fifty. Oh wait. Maybe like this. And now, there we go. Okay. Yes, I can do this now. Minus this percentage. I, it doesn't make any sense at. Uh, let's go way down. <laughs> yeah, I know that account then as you can see. Okay. First I need to work out the difference uh, between two numbers comparing to in case number. Gang here increase divided by the number or a hundred percent. So I'm removing this because I already have the the decimal percentage. Okay. It's a form. I can actually back. Hey wait. I may like to know how that actually works. Formula. Uh -huh. Okay. Try this one out. There we go. It's the value amount multiplied by the percentage. It's going to be 10. Okay. So, I guess I just, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Like what I did. Okay. What? Then, if I want to move that percent, what is, what's going to, oh, for that, there we go. This happened. Hey, what are you doing there? What is it doing? A thousand should be pretty straightforward. The thing that you can do is, um, let's just put in, uh, we'll put in. 100, 200, ah, no, he's 500. Typing. There's some numbers here and just to work out. Okay, so I'm calculating uh, percentage values correctly here. Let's remove this. Here are my values. So I'm going to put here the percentage value. 0, 2, 50%. Ah, oh, but I don't know what the actual value percentage is here. Never mind that. Uh, 
this is going to be really involved i'm just going to trust myself or watch the i can actually see the the, the expected results okay with this cam r n s Here we go. Song one, forty-one two one zero. You can see Matt is not really my forty. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. It's not the same value actually. Okay, here's the same thing. This one. And it's it's pretty much the same value because uh rounding error here. So I guess I'm doing fine. It's not really clean actually. I really like it. It's way too big here. I guess that I'm going to learn to live with it. Okay. Uh, yes, this, this line is way too long. Never mind, I guess. Okay, so let's leave it like that. Uh, bottles without this cam. Oh no, okay. Let's uh, change this order by. Order by the total amount which includes the discount. Let's remove just this word here. There we go. There we go. Guess we're done now. Really bad at math, as you can see. However, I do trust that if I am actually using the correct logic for doing the calculation, and I can uh, just uh, asserted with my uh, my lack of math skills um, at least i know that this is actually the right way to do it yes okay so let's move on anyway yeah let's learn math later as you can see you don't really need math to actually be uh, a proficient programmer as you can actually see other Okay, I wonder, I'm going to be embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not going to edit this out. So you are probably watching this anyway. <laughs> okay, before high value customer with this gun, okay. Never mind. High value customers with this. Huh? This, but with discount. So in this case, and on the hint, uh, the field name is all together. Yet on the expected resource table is uh, I see a spaces here. Is a space? No, oh, there is no space. So uh, it looks a space. Never mind then. Okay, it's okay. Uh, well, let's just uh, uh, let's fix that. We we'll have a uh, just. Just fix it. There we go. Oh. Uh. There we go. Okay. So let's get those changes on the next rep on the next uh, commit. And let's move on. Number thirty-five. What do I need to do? Month and orders. To do here. At the end month, at the end of the month. Salespeople are likely to try much harder to get orders. 
to meet their month end quotas show all orders made on the last day of the month order by employee id and order id pattern result employee id order id order date Okay, these are the last orders. Okay, I see two for every single. Oh, I show in all orders, not just one, not, not just the last order. I show in all orders made on the last day of the month. So the first question is going to be, I guess, how do I get the last day of the month? And which month, by the way? Order by employee. Okay, let's see. We have the last day of every single month, of every single year, for what I can see. 20 February 28th. Okay. July 31. June 30. Okay, 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 okay. So I guess I I'm not going to be filtering by year. I'm going to be fil I need to find the last day of every single month on the table. Show that order. So that's basically the the thing here. I'm going to be um, joining two two tables maybe. I'm going to be joining the employee table and the order table. I no, I'm not sure if the order detail table is also need needs to be uh, joined here. Perhaps I have already all the information on the order table. I may skip joining the order detail. I'm not sure actually. You can work on developing the end of month calculation yourself with a combination of date functions such as date at and date if. But feel free shortcut the process by doing some research online yeah i'm going to do that actually okay uh, tsql how to find the last day of the month thank you uh okay they add a day it is another day at okay and I'm going to replace this. Wait, that's the that's the, the the question. Or any date, okay. So test is going to be replaced by, by the name of the field actually. Yes. Okay, this is way complicated. I wonder if there is a a function that just return oh hello here end of month function. Is there documentation for this? Nice. Wonderful. This is just what I need. Start date. Okay, the, the second parameter is optional. Ah, okay, the number of months. So let's check out an example here. We are getting a, a date time value, end of month as a result, and it's getting this, the end of this month, uh, 12 January 2011. Oh no, this is December 1st, 2011. As a result, we're getting December 31. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's try it out with this function here. Let's make an experiment. End of month and a date. That's what I need. Okay, so. First, let's get back here. Uh, okay, the set like blah, 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 blah. I need to show all orders made on the last day of the month. 
let's begin with a let's let's start with a simple query here select let's select everything first from orders there we go here we have the order date this is the field i got to be needing so let's add a where clause here oh no wait let's let's add a field here first just to test it out let's remove this field and order date and this should create an anonymous field with the last day there we go look at this but this is what i need the this order in particular has been made the the fourth of the seventh month 2014 and the calculated field is showing me the last day of this month in particular so with this if I add an alias here, last day of last day of the month, just to just to give it a name, I guess I can add a where clause now. Uh, I wonder if I can do this last day of the month is equals well it's actually where order date is equal to last day of the month i guess it's not going to show me anything because i'm comparing i cannot do this actually because they are different data types so I need to convert the order date first. Convert the order date to a date. Now I can actually uh, pair them. Okay. Happen. Valid column name, last day of the month. So I cannot use the. I need to actually recast the function here. There we go. So let's try it out. Okay. Order day is still showing me. Well, here is showing me the actual day and time for some of them. 11 o'clock. So uh, order day is going to remain with the actual value for the time. That's why we are seeing like this. It's fine, I guess. Uh, did I just finish? No, I need to include the employee information here. Employee ID. Is that already included here? Okay. Oh, I don't see. It. it must be. Employee ID. Let's just filter by the fields here. Be done with it. Last day of the month. I don't really need anymore so it's going to be employee id order id and order date there we go uh, is there an order by order by employee id and order Okay, okay. It'll be fine. Twenty six rows, not a big deal. It was simpler. Uh is still okay. Okay, it looks like it's already, it's already done. So, okay, let's move on. Add this to the repo. Okay.
Let's move on. Thirty-six orders with many line items. The Norwin mobile app developers are testing an app that customers will use to show orders. In order to make sure that even the largest orders will show up correctly on the app, they, are, they have likely some samples of orders that have lots of individual line items. What is a line item? Show the 10 orders with the most line items in order of total line items. That's the result. Total order. Ah, I see. So every order, every row on the orders table, it have a direct relationship with the order details table and I guess that this order have 25 items on the order this is the, this field here is showing how many items do this order have so I need to show that using the order details table you will use group by and count okay okay I get it I get it Okay, let me see. Now let's begin with a single, with a simple query as always. And let the orders table. Oh wait, add everything. Oh wait. Let's select everything from the orders table. And we have this the order ID that I'm going to need. Oh, wait. Problem is that I cannot really do this without joining or considering the order detail because I need the total order detail. Ah, uh, never mind. I actually don't need the order stable then. The because the order details already have the order ID on it. So I guess I can use the order details table on this query only. Okay, I guess I guess I'm only going to be using that. They already have the order ID. Now I need to do count to know how many lines do every order have. Yes. Can remove this and set the order ID and account function. Know how many how many rows do I have? In this case, for example, I'm going to have one, two, three for this order ID and specifically. No? To get order ID 10, 2, 4, 8. And the next value is going to be 3. The alias is going to be called total order detail. There we go. I'm going to begin moving something. Have a, a move. There we go. What else are we going to need? Oh yeah, I need a group by clause, I forgot. Because I am using an aggregate function count. Group by order ID because I'm yes, I need to group by and so these three records are going to be grouped by in a single one. And this is going to work now. See? There we go. So it's already showing me the, the total order. Did I just finish here? Is this ordered by something? I some sample of orders that have lost. Show the 10 orders 
I need to show the 10 orders with the most line items in order of total line items as result. I'm going to do this maybe. Need to do this. Wait, I order I total details descendant. I guess I did it then. Twenty five six sixty. Yes, yes, I, I just did it. Okay, that wasn't that hard. Actually. <laughs> okay, so basically, I forgot to add a group by here because I'm using an, aggreg uh, an aggregate function here. <coughs> and besides that, I need to actually group by just to uh, make those 25 records into a single one here. Well, I was actually able to do it, so let's move on. Okay, let's add this to the repo. There we go. Number way. Number thirty-seven. Orders random assortment. Okay, so what do I need to do? The Norwin mobile app developers would like they uh, would now like to just get a random assortment of orders for beta testing their app. Show a random set of two percent of all orders. But I don't really know how to do that yet. No, your result will be different because we are returning a random set. However, there should be 17 rows returned. Okay, so these values, uh, I'm not going to get them, but I should get 17 all the time. Note that in the below SQL, the random value field returns the same random value for each row now. Do some research online to figure out how to get a new random value for each so basically this is the answer ready going to be doing a select or a d random value equals to a function here okay um orders okay, let's try this first okay let's try this oh god there we go. What does this do? Ah, I, I see. I'm getting the same value here for everyone. Okay. Okay. I guess this is uh, when the function is run, this query, it runs just once. It's going to create a single value that is going to be used from there onward for every single record. So, I guess. Yes, I cannot use this. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's do some research. Okay. 
it says that it's going to return a float value from 0 to 1, where 0 and 1 are excluded. Okay. You can send an optional seed. Expression. Okay, it assigns 1. Okay. It just gives me a random number. Once. Here we have a, a while loop. Here I'm getting a new number every time. It's, it, it's not saying anything. Okay, first. <coughs> Note that in browser, the same random value for each row. Do some research online and figure out how to get a new random value for it. Okay, let's see. How do I generate a random number for each row in TSQL? I, I already tried this. It's going to generate just one. Okay. Uh, this is a solution to this that does not use new ID. Okay. There are numbers. What is it? Okay, we do have several functions here. I don't know what they do. Let's read some following general random number 13 to see if we normalize this. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> okay, never mind. This. Okay. Let's see what uh, what this function does. Check out ABS, ESQL. What's, what does it do? It's a mathematical function that returns the absolute positive value of the specified numbers. Oh, okay, absolute number. Okay. What does this do? This function returns a checksum of the values in a group. It knows null values. Get it. Okay. Get the checksum before the column values. Okay. I don't know what a checksum is. Actually, wait a minute, it's not the same function. Anymore. Gate, here, here we are, checksum, what is this? Returns checksum value computed over a table row or over an expression list. Use checksum to build hash indexes. Oh, so it's going to generate a, a large value, so never mind then. Yeah, I'm not going to be using this. Okay, uh, new ID. What does it do? Uh, creates a unique value of type unique identifier. Okay, yes. Samples. Creating a local variable with declare set syntax. Okay, declaring a, a variable. I'm going to set it to a new ID. Printing the, uh, the value. Converting the value to bar char. Okay. Converting the, the new ID value to a bar char is giving me this. 
I guess the result is going to change every time it's executed. Okay. Actually, I may use this for the sorting. Collapse, render, because they actually want just a random assortment. So basically, if I order the results in a random manner by some uh, random field, okay, let, let's see what happens if Okay. Okay, let's change something here. Oh wait. Let's move the fields down here. So it's readable. Okay. Okay. This is a value random number. Let's uh ah. okay, just give it an alias. What happened? Uh why? Ah no, I, I cannot just uh I already did that, so never mind. Okay. Random value. Okay. What if so what I want is a random value for every single record? What if just the there we go new ID there we go what if I run this again getting a random value in the random value field every single row has the same value yet on the new id this this new id i wonder if i can there we go on the new id field i get a different value for every one of them if i order by uh the new id there we go i get a random assortment and we're done. <coughs> Almost done. Let's let's just uh guess I'm not going to do this then. There we go, it's over. Uh wait, uh what's this? Uh show a random set of two percent all orders. God okay. Ah, never mind. Uh, forget okay how to calculate percent ah that's not it total rows yes category think so no but i i actually need to limit the amount of rows here because i'm getting a total of 830 under if well i can actually do the calculation here and limit it So what I need to do here is get the two percent of eight hundred and thirty. I can do this right now 
it will work how do i say okay so 830 is the current max number from this query in particular can i get a count here down asterisk oh why I need the 2% of this query to work out. What? Uh, SQL top 2%. Why you select? Why you select top 100%? We can actually do this. And then wait. Oh my god, look at this. I can actually uh, use a percentage here. Okay. Question, how do I use this? Okay, percent. Okay. So how do I use it? Nice, okay. Select top 5%. It's going to show me the five percent of the entire. There we go. Yes. I only need the two percent. That's it. Seventeen rows. Okay. Okay, seems fine. Order. Okay, seems like uh, it's already done. Uh, I only need to test the order ID. 18. Oh, not the same. Oh, wait, never mind, because I only need to show 17 rows. They are getting them randomly. Yeah. It will be 18 returns. So I guess I should just uh, move a new ID not required. Add it here. There we go. So every single time. There we go. Getting 17 rows every single time. There we go. I got I guess I should leave it like that. Oof. Eh. Learn a, I learned a lot on this one. Let's add it to the repo. Let's move on. We go. Orders accidental double entry. Got. Okay. What do I need to do? Janet Levering, one of the salespeople, has come to you with a request. She thinks that she accidentally entered a line item twice on an order, each time with a different product ID, but the same quantity. 
Okay, okay. So it's a different product. The same quantity. She remembers that the quantity was 60 or more. Show all the orders IDs items. Yes, in order ID. Set the result. Okay, I'm going to be building on the previous one. Like this, okay. Orders, details. Okay, I'm going to actually use this. Okay. Just a select. Okay, let's use this. Run. Okay, so here are the orders. Uh, wait a minute. Not filtering by by username. See. Okay, I'm starting with this. However, this will only give you give us the orders where at least one order detail has a quantity of sixty. Need to show orders with more than one order detail. A quantity of 60 or more. Also, the same value for quantity needs to be there more than once. In addition to grouping the order ID, we also need to group by quantity. We need to show the order detail. An order we need to group by both order ID and quantity. Let's do this first. We are ready here. We are ready there. Goodbye. It will be product ID. No, wait. It's a different product ID, so it should be order ID and quantity. Idea. Okay. Wait, what? Yes. What? Okay. Remove the in the order ID. This. There we go. Don't know. Let let this. Okay. But we're at least one order D. Quantity of 60 more. We need to show orders with more than one order D. With more than what one order. I am already on the order detail field on the order detail table. So I am on the order detail table already. Quantity sixty equals or more than sixty. Okay. I already grouped by the order ID and quantity. Is repeated. Need a way. No, the rows, the order detail I repeated more than one. Than one. So I, I guess I could count. I cannot see it here. Let's try something here. Let's count the amount of rows on the order detail field. And they should be. There should be more than one of those. Oh, okay, okay, I forgot. I always forgot about this. I cannot use aggregate functions on where clauses. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Son, I believe those are the same values, different order. Uh, here, they order by something. Over. They, I think they are ordered by the smallest to the greater. Let's order by this, the only <laughs> field there. <coughs> there we go. Hey, it looks like uh, it's, it's all done. Hey. Actually, really thinking here. Okay, let's keep moving then. Uh, okay. How oh, many problems are there? Oh my god. Still a long way to go actually. Okay, let's just keep moving. Okay. 39 orders accidental How many are? 57 here. Okay, so thirty nine. This okay. Orders accidental double entry. What do I need to do? Based on the previous question, we now want to show details of the order for orders that match the above criteria. Expected result, order ID, so I only need to show the, the details. Okay. Pretty simple. Okay. So let me try to. There we go. There we go. Okay, so I need order ID. I already have this field here. The previous query, the product ID, the price, the quantity, and the discount. Okay. Okay, so th these are the same orders, I just need to expand it. There are many ways of doing this, including CTE, common table expression, and derived table. Oh my god, yes, you see, and as query, good article, if sample of the Norway returns orders made by the oldest employee. Will all the employee as an input query this return the oldest employee at one employee from okay the oldest employee the let order ID 
open date for orders that employee ID is equals that employee ID. So, so this is basically like creating some kind of uh, temporary table using a query. I'm going to include it with this wet. Then I'm going to be using this temporary table here. It down here to get the employee ID. Let's read the article. Yes, I need everything. I cannot just click it. Fine. With common table expression. Ah, CT is common table expression. Specify a temporary name and resource set of a, known as a common table expression. This is the, derived from a simple query and defined with the execution scope of a single select. Set of date delete at merge statement. This clause can also be used to create a view statement as part of its defining select statement. With and the query. Common expression is going to be as it query definition. Sample started samples and uh, creating a simple common table expression. So with a name as person as query. I wonder if it's necessary to add all this. Referencing cells. Meet counts and report average. Okay, we'll sell CTE and fields up here as the sales person ID count. Ah, number of orders. Okay, so count is going to be number of orders. Sales person ID is going to be same name so i can use these fields down here i guess number of orders it's actually pretty useful now that i think of it as average as per person so basically i can use a subset outside this query tell me doing something uh, so the hint is referring to this query so let's try it out. Okay, let's let's try it. This is an example of it in Norway. The oldest employee, but this is a different uh, exercise. Okay, me colon with that. Okay. This example, I don't see the. I don't. I just don't see the fields here. Maybe this is optional. Okay, never mind. Let's. Uh, oh, I don't know. What's this called? It is. Duplicate CT and as uh, in parentheses the suit query. As this looks like uh, the notation for a cursor. It's very similar actually. So what I going I going to need 
is the order IDs the previous. Uh, I, I guess I can use this. This should give me the duplicates. Right? So I copy the same query. It's going to give me all these order IDs. And I'm going to use the order IDs on the actual query. So I already have the subset. I may just uh, get the information from this query here. Down here. So, as this works, I need, to, I need now the select statement. Okay, so do have this. Let, let's look here. Let order ID, order date from orders where. So basically, I'm going to use in a where clause the subset that I'm choosing here. What, what do I need to show? The fields are order ID, product ID. I try quantity from what table? Can I join this? Is this a join? No. On the, okay, let's check it out first. Or, here, order details. I'm going to need order ID, product ID, unit price quantity, unit price quantity, and discount. I do have all the, all the fields here. So I guess. I can just or uh, list them here. ID. Good ID. Quantity discount. Okay. From the order details table because all the all the information is on this table anyway you can see it here and on the where clause where and i only have one field here order id i how do i refer to it where order id in employee id I need to do a suit query here. Okay, where order ID and is inside this subset. Oh, select on. Ah, okay. So I I guess I can use this as a table name. Select order ID. From I should do the trick I guess. Oh, something happened. Okay, okay, okay. There's the order by clause. It's invalid in views, inline function. I don't have an order I oh wait, 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 wait. Here. Okay. Wait, did it work? Yes, it does. Do I need to sort that? Did I just did it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I do have the records here. They are, they seem to be out of order. Okay. Wait a minute. It have an order up here. We'll do. 
Yes. There we go. That's something. And yet the problem is these are supposed to be duplicates. I just don't see how 60 equal to 5. This particular or oh wait no never mind. 60 is repeated with T60 over here. T65 for this order is it the same order the other 65 oh, okay so wait wait and uh, let's add a quantity here and here we can actually see the the duplicates now clearly 60 65 for a single order the next order is 55 where is the other 55 is it Seventy. There is a repeated here. I don't know why this is sixty. Other one. The other one. Let's put here. Oh, never mind. Uh, I already just. I already got the order IDs. Uh, sixty sixty five. 55, 60, and the 70. Looks like I actually got the, the right results anyway. 60 entries. <coughs> okay. I think I did, I do have the right values here. This order here. This one here. Okay. Looks like it's okay. okay it seems like I'm done. This is new for me. This is the first time I try to work with this. I can see how it's actually useful. Because sometimes what I do is uh, uh, to do something similar to this, I'm, I'm often forced to create uh, a function that actually returns this value here, the order ID. And I create a function just for that. Right here, I can actually create a, a query that creates this and I can omit the creation of a storage function. Just only if I want to, I wonder if I can actually pass parameters to this. I don't think so. Because I'm basically creating a data set on the fly here and using it on another query. Using a suit query. This is the suit query I'm, I'm using it. So I can see how this is actually useful. So let's add this to the repo. These problems are really hard, actually. I don't think that I'm going to be able to complete them single run, I hope. Let's just get going. 40. Orders, accidental, double entry. D oh my god, again. Okay. Yes. I, I, at this point, I feel really out of my comfort zone at, with this so i am starting to working with some but I, actually i fell way out of my comfort zone when i uh, researched the new id function and previous to that so i guess this is what coding is all about and learning to code is all about it's uh, experimenting and trying new things and face the fear of, re of rejection in this case the fear getting stuck and not knowing what to do 
not knowing what to do is fine. We had Google and a lot of and a lot of documentation thanks to the Microsoft uh, people here. It's really good doc documentation. You just need to actually uh, <laughs> work really hard to actually understand it. Uh, yet I think it's really good documentation here. So let's continue. Uh, orders, accidental, double entry details, derived table. It is another way of getting the same results in the previous. Oh my god, okay. Using the derived table instead of a CTE. However, there is a bug in this SQL. It returns 20 wrong still 6 SQL problem. Okay, in this case, uh, they are giving me a a previous query here let's copy and paste it okay don't even read it i don't even damn it okay okay i don't even this comes directly from the book this ah okay this is pretty sophisticated and i wait what oh okay wonder if i can uh reformat this code just to be able to there we go this a little clearer so he's doing a select. So I guess this was the actual solution in the book. Okay, but there is a bug here. He says there is a bug in what is it? Where the quantity is 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 the the same thing. No, it's not the same. There's a count here. He's using count. On a suit query, potential problems. He's doing a join here. Yeah. So this is a table. So she's using a suit query as a table name here. So all of this may be just a table. Instead of using a table name, she's using the actual suit query to generate a, a, a to use this subset on the join. So potential problem orders i guess this is the alias for all of this so potential problem orders on potential problem orders and she's joining by the order id on this suit query and she's joining them on the order details okay so far so good so it's basically doing i didn't know you can actually do this i guess i could figure it out uh, because suit queries can be inserted in a lot of places so I guess it makes sense to me I, it didn't occur to me to do this way he says there is a bug he's even ordering by the order ID and product ID your first step should be to run the SQL in the derived table okay wait in the derived table so this suit query what do you notice about the results? So here is the derived table. I notice that they are not sorted out, obviously. They cannot be sorted down here. Or can they? It doesn't matter because uh, this suit set is going to be used uh, for a join, so it doesn't really need to be ordered because it's going the join is going to be ordered right here at the end, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, what? There are five entries. How many entries do I have here? Okay, let let me. Same. Okay, so I guess this was the 
the recommended way of solving the, the previous problem, I guess. What is what is the bug? Okay. Using a derivative of stream for a city. However, there's a point says here. 20 rows instead of 16. Correct the SQL. So it's the number of rows what is what is wrong here. Let me check. I had 20. Yeah. Wait a minute. I do have the my solution. How many do I get here? Getting 16. Why? Wait a minute. So I am actually right here. Question is. What is the difference here? This exercise showing the same thing on the orders, yet I'm doing only the order details table. That's it. But in here, is is doing a select from the order details, and is actually joining that information. In appearance, seems to be the same thing. Yet the join may be injecting some problems here. Why? Seems to be the same subset. It is Goodbye. Did I group it inside this? Maybe that's the problem. Why I did I do the same thing here? Really, I'm going to pick some typos here. Okay, what what's going on? I I I'm missing the point here. Point here. seems to be the pretty much the same. What is the bug anyway? Order details, order ID. I guess I may need to list the order details. Doing a join, so it's, it's nothing wrong here, I guess. Special problem order. She's not sure that these are actually problems. Okay. Let's see. Need to run this. The book is saying that there is a problem here. Hi. Oh, wait a minute. If I do a join, my question is going to be if I do a join here, the order details. Since the subset is repeating this value here, I wonder if this, this is going to add me away my solution. You had four, the ones repeated are. I guess it's duplicating the number ID because I'm getting two duplicates on the same order. This is going to be a problem because I guess it's injecting this twice for every order that have 
like in this one here especially on this one here i i do get 260s and 265s so that's why i run this i'm getting the same thing here yet line grouping here but it's uh, okay this is fine this is doing the same thing getting twice here is not affecting me because here i'm doing an in so basically it's like when i'm doing an in where ordered id n is already choosing one of those so these two inside this in is are counting just like one entry anyway as when yes Okay. is this in one of these values it doesn't matter if i uh multi if i copy and paste this uh several times anyway it's going to give me the same thing but if i do it in a join in an inner join it's going to mess me up because it's going to the join is going to repeat it anyway oh okay Void getting duplicates Okay, so I get a duplicate on the query. This he has jacked several times. So I forgot about this. Yes. And I do that this thing. There we go. That's it. Sixteen rows here. It was column name. Hmm. That's inside the soft query. Why is ambiguous? And it was a, a previous mistake. Uh, okay. I get 16 now because the join is not going to. Re I, I didn't realize that because here I'm using an in clause here. So basically, I, it doesn't matter if, if, if this is, is a. a it doesn't really matter if this returns the same value several times the in clause is going to do the favor to me to just choose uh, the right amounts here but in the join here it does matter how many values you get here because it's a join and it's going to create uh, duplicate columns for every single entry here on this data set i guess it's, it's over Check. Oh, not the same. Oh, wait. Okay, it's the same subset. Uh, I guess I should. Is order correct? Wait. There we go. I was on the. I don't see an expected uh, results here. Okay, so find a single keyword that you can easily add to avoid duplicates in SQL. Oh God, I should have read that. Didn't read this. We'll have uh, save a lot, a lot of time here. Put more attention to this. Never mind. I guess uh, it's fine. I guess forty-one. Let's move on. Okay, we're doing fine. We're almost there. Seven, eight more to go. Okay, so 41 late orders. 
Some customers are complaining about their orders arriving late. Which orders are late? Sort the results by order ID. Cut that result, order ID, order date, record date, and ship date, and I will sort by order. Okay, I need to know is the order date is this one, wire date, and the ship date. It doesn't say there is a an arrived date, maybe the date of arrival it doesn't exist. Well, I know that if uh, <laughs> the the order date is after the required date. Oh wait, if the shipping date if after comes after the required date. It's obviously uh, obviously late, so I can do that. Okay, so some rows were not included. Should be thirty nine. Determine which orders are late. You can use a combination of the required date and shipping date and shift date. Okay, that's the same thing. Not that sad, but if the shift date is actually after required date. Can be sure it's late. Yeah. I think this is quite easy. Okay, 41 late orders. So let's begin with a simple query. Um, orders. So here we have the three main fields I'm going to be using. Uh, let's try with a where clause. Where condition is huh? ship date is actually after ship date. So if ship date is greater than Required date. Ship, ship a date greater than required date. Is that it? Thirty six rows. No, it should be thirty nine. Missing rows. Why? Okay. Let's try the greater than or equals and see what do we get. Thirty nine, that was it. That was pretty simple, I think. Nine rows. Okay. Are they ordered by some? Or resolved by order ID now? Yeah. And what do we have here? Volco is here there. Ah, I need to filter the, the fields here. Fine. Get rid of this. Order ID, order date. E, order date. Required date and ship date. Required date and ship date. Okay, now. Then. And then twenty seven one one. This to be fine. 
Yeah, seems to be fine. I guess I just finished 39 rows. Some rows were not included. Your total should be 30. Okay, fine. I validated with the book, so why, why didn't think about the required date, uh, including the date and the time correctly? So I guess ship date cannot be the same as the required date because obviously it's going to be late anyway. So it's not enough to, to say that if ship date is greater than the required date, you need to include required date too, the validation here. So it seems to be just fine. Let's add it to the repo. Yes, I'm, I'm moving forward faster now because this was a simple query actually. It was tricky. It was a tricky query, but it was not a uh, complex. Uh, uh, I don't like to say compli complex or complicated. Uh, it was a sophisticated query. No. Sophisticated. Ah. Again. Uh. How do I go in a commit? I always forget that. Last commit. There we go. There we go. Do this again. Let's just paste it here and be done with it. Oh wait, add solution. What happened? What forty one late or happening? Two. On there we go. Save it. Post it. And done. Let's check it out. And up here as solution forty one. There we go. Okay, seems fine. Let's get go. Let's get moving. Don't lose the momentum. Uh, what number? 41? 41, okay. 42. We're almost done, actually. Okay. Late orders which employees? Late, late orders which some sales people had more orders arriving late than others. Maybe they are not following up uh, on the order process and need more training. Which sales people had the most orders arriving late? This is actually a really good example of how managers and database administrators uh, in, uh, work together by finding who is not actually pulling his, his or hers or its own weight around the company. So I I get in asked for this kind of reports all the time. So it's not weird. Uh, so I'm pretty used to it anyway. Okay, so who has the most blame here? Total result, employee ID, last name. Total late order seems to be a sum or a count actually account of total late orders. The answer from the earlier problem, late orders, is a good starting point. You need to join the employee table, get the last name, also count, 
show the total late order. So let's do that. This is going to be my starting point. Here are the late orders. Execute this. Here are my late orders. Now I need to know. Let's try to let's see if the employee ID is around here. It, it is orders right? the round table. Okay, employee ID. Okay, let's join the table. Employee ID. Join. Employees. There you go. S O. S E. There you go. Okay, so if I execute this, I'm going to get the same values, but I add the employee ID here. Yes, but the name of the table here. Employee ID, okay. By getting the employee ID for every single of one of those, that's it. Last name, last name. Okay, employee ID, employee dot last name. Okay, so we have a last name here. Someone's last name is Peacock. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Oh, so many people have this. We are repeating na last names here. Uh. This is where I'm going to be begin the grouping process. Let's actually do it right now. Let's group by employee ID. Last name for the sake of it. Happen. Uh, order by order ID. Okay, so it's not contained. The leaf is not. Column orders dot order ID invalid. I just add it here. Done with it. Yes, I could just. Uh, no. That we need to remove it. Okay, three orders. Oh no. Okay. ID. There we go. So here is the people. Now we need the information all orders and these two are going to come from aggregate function so all orders and late orders so the first one is going to be a simple count i guess count if it's going to be orders table the id of the order will be a good example here as all orders okay i'm not filtering anything here there we go three four five ten two. fine perfect now i'm going to move this uh, down here yes let's fix this a little bit Okay, it's easier to read. All orders. I'm going to do something very similar here with date order. Oh, wait. Is that all orders? Okay, wait, 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 wait. 
Did I beat this one? Ah, never mind. Okay, you should be late. Okay, you are late orders. <laughs> Find that. Okay, so I do have late orders. I need all orders from. How do I get all orders from this guy? Good query, maybe? So my question would be hmm, how do I get the how do I get the total data on Where's the other field? Oh, never mind. I, I, oh, never mind. I was watching something else. Eight orders. Guess I'm done already. I think I just scrolled by accident into the next expected result, and I was just, uh, was driving me mad anyway. The late orders. Yes, I, I just, yes. I guess I'm going to be using this same query for the next one. Save it anyway. Uh, uh, commit. There we go. 40, 41, 42. Okay. We're almost done. Okay. Keep moving. Date orders versus total orders. Now we need to do this. It was getting complicated before, but uh, I need to solve it now. But okay, Andrew, the VP of sales, has been doing some more thinking on more about the problem of late orders. He realizes that just looking at the number of orders arriving late. For each salesperson isn't good isn't a good idea. It needs to be compared against the total number of orders per salesperson. We want results like the following. Employee ID, last name it's basically the same thing as the previous query. We just need to add the all orders field here. Hint. You can use more than one CTE in a query. That would be a straightforward way of solving this problem. Here are two SQL statements that could be put into CTEs and put together into a final SQL statement. Date orders could be a CTE. Total orders. Late orders versus total orders. Okay, so basically I should encapsulate inside CTEs these two uh, suit queries here and use them on a join maybe because i need to oh, no never mind it's going to be a join with ploy id and total order okay let's okay let's try this out so in my work, what I will do is to create a, a function that will return these values here and be done with it. But yet we are not doing that. We are going to do it with. Oh, let's get back to the CTE example here. This yet. There we go. Duplicate CTE as a sub query. 
Okay. Where clause? Using it in a subquery down here. I guess I'm going to be using the CTE inside the WHERE clause anyway. Let's see. Okay, let's begin. 43. Dot. Oh, wait, no. I already did that. I did that. I am 42 now. Oh, wait. 2. 3 now. Eight orders versus total orders. Let's copy the previous one. This is going to be my starting point. Okay. Here. My guess is that I'm going to need to encapsulate this field here as a CTE. So, yes, is a wet, wet, we're going to be the okay, orders, underscore CT, as, 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 I'm going to set, how do I get the late orders query here? It needs to be a table. Or it's a data set that is going to be represented as a table here. Set everything from the, the orders table. Orders table can be all though because I'm only going to need the ID of the order, I guess. Well, what I'm going to need, okay, let's, let's move on first. What do I need from this? going to need this this going to need this this is the one how many late orders do I have from whom that's the second question this needs this actually needs an alias so that this is going to become an involved suit query, isn't it? Okay, the let count as uh, eight orders. How do I get late orders directly? Because down here, we're actually doing a join here. Getting way too complicated for this. Oh, wait a minute. I don't really need to figure it out. It's already here. And okay, late orders E orders okay I guess let's just copy all this I'm done with it I don't need to actually think 
spot here. Because it's already on the... There we go. wonder if I can... Format this section here. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so... Date order CTE is going to be a select employee ID total orders. Why total? Well, the where clause is going to filter it. It's going to filter this. Total orders is actually all the late orders. Yes, it's, I don't know why it's late orders. It could be late orders. Wrong with it. Okay, that's the first CTE. The second one. Will be total orders CT. Yes. Uh, I just need to copy and paste it. Total orders is the let. Let's copy and paste it here. Here. <coughs> just the same let's format this what? not reformatting hi same thing isn't it Quote. Okay, that's weird. Why is doing this? Okay, never mind. Fine now. So I got two CTEs here total orders and eight orders. Employee ID and total orders. I don't know why total order is sharing the same name of both CTEs. For the join, maybe. Okay, do have two here. Question: Do I use them? How do I use them? Okay, I have the two CTE. Let's see what field do I use. Employee ID. The employee's table. Or maybe from the orders table too. Last name, that's from the employee's table. And the information from both C. Need to join them with the CTE. They could be included on a single row. So yes, okay. Considering I'm going to need more space, I do have this both CTEs. The query. I do have something here anyway. I do have a select listing the employee ID. That's fine. The employee last name that's fine uh, I'm going to remove this one try to run this with where oh I guess that's why I need the semicolon here semicolon No. Okay, all this is selected. Here. Okay, it works. It's okay, the CTEs are loaded. You can work with them. I need the all orders field on the all other CTE. Let's check out the all total orders. Okay, so let's try something here. Let's join. 
Under. There we are. Total order city. Okay. On. Okay, slowly now. Total order city. With the employees. E dot E employee shall be equals to the order city e dot employee ID. Now I can show the field. Okay. Okay. I am on new territory here, that's why I'm doing this slowly. Okay, so. I can use this table here. Wonder if I can actually use a alias, but I'm not going to because I learn it. I still learning here. Dot. I total orders. I do this. Okay, we're fine. We're doing fine. Total orders is invalid separate list because. Hey. Valid at test <coughs> not contain. Maybe I should get rid of the group by. I'm not really using it here. Let's comment it out. Because I'm not really using it at this level here. So it probably is just going to mess me up. Ah. Okay, okay. I do need a group by somewhere. Maybe not because I'm, wo I'm working with joints. So probably I could filter out with a join here. And Okay, if I group by, I'm going to get one single entry for all of this. I'm going to group by these three records. If I put the group by again, I'm going to trigger the exception again. I'm showing a record that maybe I should just add it here. I, I not want. I, I'm tired of just uh, adding fields here. Let me see. It will be like this. Wait a minute. Total orders. It's going to mess me up later because I'm going to add same field name. Let's add it like this. Well, it works. I don't really like to do this. Because I'm working with joints here, uh, but just just let them be for the moment. Okay, what else? I need to repeat the process for the other city. Join those orders. Tell orders. What's the name? Total order city. Late order city. Join late. All orders. What, what is going on here? The problem here. Why? It's not taken into consideration. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that was going to be a problem now. It was out of the scope because of the semicolon. Never mind then. Okay, I learned something right here. Okay, so okay, so this is in the scope now. Late order city e on. Uh, get back. It's going to be e dot employee id equals. Late order city 
dot employee ID. Okay, here's the join. What happened? Wait. Hi, there is nothing there. Here, he were with. Why? Having problems running the both of those, I guess. And uh, okay, let's let's Google that. Got this simple TS query and it's a bunch of fun from Okay, related tables. My data model is simple. Let's see the example here, CT1. So here's the problem. The wet is going to where is the other one? Oh, here is the other one, the second CTE. They are separated by a semi by a by a column here. I cannot use width again. Need to separate the CTEs by a column. Okay. It was pretty straightforward, thank God. Yes. Do this. Now it's in a scope. Okay, it ran. So the join is done. My guess. And I'm going to need an alias now. Because eight order city e dot total orders share the same name same problem here the other city e dot what there we go they are named the same thing But I guess I can just uh, <coughs> add a, an alias here. Call it a day. And I, I'm getting really tired. <laughs> so I, I could in corners here, obviously. I could actually rename this uh, late orders CT field because it doesn't make sense. I'm going to do that actually. Yeah, uh, screw the alias. I'm going to rename you late orders inside the late orders. There we go. I guess that should be enough. Oh, this total. Oh yeah, of course. Late orders here, and there we go. It looks clean now. Sort of. <laughs> okay. So I got to modify the code in the from the original outer a little bit, make it sense because I don't really think that total orders on the late order CTE makes any sense. So okay, it's all fun. Uh, okay, seems like everything is fine. There we go. Let's check out the better resource table. The volume fuller levering. Oh, it's fine to me. Okay. Doesn't seem to be ordered in a particular order anyway. Oh no, yeah, by employee ID. Never mind. Oh wait. Uh, wow, this one was a, lab, uh, was a mouthful. Let's add it to the repo. Yeah, 43. How many are they? 
God, there are a lot more to go. Okay, let's just finish it. Uh, let's just make a, a, a really big one, a really big video here. Okay, so 43, 43, 43. 44 Late orders versus total orders missing okay. Late orders versus total orders missing What do I need to do? There is an employee missing in the answer from the problem above Ah, oh, I didn't realize Fix the SQL to show all employees who take who have taken orders. Okay. But the result was missing. How many rows are returned when you run just the all order CTE? How oh, ah it's a join. It's an inner join and to the uh, a left join, I guess. How about when you run just the late orders? Let's try that quick. Run this CTE. Get eight. Didn't even realize that. Nine. Someone is missing. Okay. Someone is. I think five is missing. Number five on the late orders. So I guess employee number five doesn't have eight orders. That's why it shows on the total order CTE, uh, yet is not on the late order CTE. So I guess a left join is what is going to be required right here. You want to add a left join, also known as left your outer join to make sure that we show a row even if there are no late orders. Okay, so I guess uh, it should be pretty straightforward. Oh wait, let's copy the code here. There we go. Now, uh, the left join should be here, the late order. Five, wait. late orders on yes of course round table from city you'll show me f join here is that enough oh no. okay I think maybe in both but I don't want to guess I think If I get it in both, I'm going to link it to the left orders table for the employees join. No, it has to be in the orders table. Okay. My first guest here, left join. Late order C T. Joining on the employee ID. So this show me uh, 
Oh, because if I run date order CTE, going to be missing five. It's not here. It will be here. Ah, it's not showing me five anyway. Okay, what is it? Okay, let's see. Okay, let's again. Let's run this. Three, four is missing five on the late order city E. Here, it's a little messy because it's not sorted out. Here, I'm getting number five here, the one missing. What happens if someone doesn't have an order here? Uh, I should figure it out because here are total orders, so it will be a zero here. Okay. I believe I need to change the table here. the left join I'm going to try not showing it because it's comparing it to the orders table obviously it's not going to find it there employees table what happens okay employees let's do it with the employees table as e I need to remove this line here. It's not going to be needed. It happens to the order state. Not needed because I'm getting the information from the CTPs anyway. They are the order table. I don't need information. So now that I'm linking, my left table is going to be employees. Now I should find number five employee there anyway. Yes. All right. Valid column name date. Ah, uh, obviously. What is shipping? Here, obviously, I don't have ship date here. I remove the order state. Yes. Wait a minute. What is why is this here? Why is this here? God. Remnants from previous exercise. I don't need this word here. It's redundant then. Anyway. It's going to conflict because these fields belong to the orders table that I just removed. What happens? Let's think. Uh, yeah, the employees try to run this. What happens? But did it work? Okay, so here is five. It wasn't that stupid enough. Okay. Now my left table is employees. And when I do a left join using the CTE, I'm going to find number five. Here. Now I'm getting the record. July on the it's already ordered by employee ID anyway. Yes, I finish it. Okay. Find nor that's it. I employees. Pipe is null, no late orders. It's actually really important here because the data is showing that 
even if these people, uh, for example, this one here has the most late orders, the truth of the matter is that he has also most of the orders. So it's a, this guy is a top performer. So taking a decision to reprimand someone just on the mistakes and not considering the wins, is actually really bad in management. So okay, I guess fine. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, that's it. I did have to remove something here, fix my query, my previous query. Never mind. Okay, so let's let's add this to the repo and move on. I really want to go home. I'm already home. Just want to finish this one. This is going to be a really long video, for what I see. Shift insert. Let's keep moving. Moving slowly. Or later. Ready that. Five. Okay. Eight orders versus total orders. Fix no. Oh. <coughs> Continuing on the answer for, from, for the above query, let's fix the results for rows 5 with Shannon. He should have a 0 instead of a null in late orders. Uh, I guess. I have the idea that it should be understood that null is equal to 0, but never mind. This is also, I, I guess it could look better if I just set a case here for the late orders. Do you remember having a case? Uh, let me see. I could replace this line over here because I know that this may be actually what do you call it? Uh, this may be actually a null value here so I may replace this line with a case how to remove Let's do some research first. Okay, how to replace null values with zero? I guess it's going to be using a case. Way too complex. This. This null function. Okay. Have null values here. The let is null, the name of the field, some string, column one. Let's, oh, let's add this, this is null. Oh. But is, is null as a function? area is no longer an expression is no discontinued date is no last name I guess if if last name is null then what syntax is just is null and, and the expression itself yet here this null is accompanied by another parameter here. Something wrong. Wait a minute. It's a function. Okay. 
after something else. Okay. Ah, wait. There are several list null. I want this one here. Transact execute one. There we go. So okay, check expression. What does it do? It substitutes a value null for another one. Perfect. So the field is here and the basic value is here. Let's try that. Null. I want to check this value here. And if it's null, if this field is null, let's return a zero. And do I need to add a, an alias here? There we go, that's it. It was a simple function call. Perfect. Okay. That's it? I think that's it. Okay, so let's add it to the repo. Nice. Start. Got again. Is the end. Didn't I copy that? There we go. Save and this log one line at solution forty five. There we go. Okay, let's keep going. Almost there. Late orders versus total orders percentage. Percentage again. Really bad at math. Yes, hi. It's doing that. Late order versus total orders percentage. What do I need to do? Now we want to get the percentage of late orders over total orders. Okay. I need to use these two values to get a percentage between them. I recall this is just a simple division. Uh, there we go. Thank you, Google. You want to know what percentage A is of B? Simply divide A by B, then take that number and move the decimal place two spaces to the right. That's your percentage. Oh. Okay. My guess, I'm going to copy the same query here. Oh my god, this query is really big. Okay. I want to use the query here. I'm going to remove this. Not required. Not required. Means on some because from previous exercises is I guess. Okay, so here is my let's add a new field here here eight orders sent going to be equals to Oh, okay, let's read. 
you want to know what percentage A is of B, simply divide A by the, the first number is A. Basically, late orders. Can I just type late orders? Late orders now. No, it doesn't matter because if I if I do this, I'm going to get null again. But I need to replace that all this again. I try to use the late orders alias here. It doesn't matter, it's going to pick up this one instead. This one here. This is the field. The field is going to return the null value, so it's not going to be working here. So I need to divide this by uh, the total orders. Copy all this. Oh my god. Getting really big. That's what she said. Okay. Eight orders percent. So, okay, and now how do I move? Let me see if this runs actually. Zero. Because I need to move the decimal point. I move the decimal point before vision after I don't know so to move the decimal point to spaces yes I could just multiply it by one it has to be before the division One that is going to wait a minute. This is an integer. There we go. I was multiplying by an integer, so the result was going to become an integer too. Okay, so this is the percentage. I like to round this, but I guess it's okay. I guess I like to round this value. Oh, no, it's not actually rounded. Let's see. Uh, the volume, 123.3. Yes, I just did it. I wonder if I can uh, go with my original answer here. Now uh, it has to be before. Will be before. Yeah, because in if I do this, the difference is that this section here is going to uh, apply first, and then by the operator. Um, Hierarchy, it is called. The priority of the operator is going to do the multiplication first here. And right after that, after I move the, the decimal point to the spaces, after that, I do the division. I get in the actual percentage. Here. <sighs> it mad, dude. I hate it. I can't stand it. I hate percentage. Uh, I I am afraid that I cannot escape it because uh, business issues most most of the business decisions include decisions based on percentage calculations and I learned the 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 wrong uh, the hard way that I need to get my formulas right. So I had some experience with it. I'm not really good at it, but I'm working on it. Uh, should be an embarrassment for how was it called Alan Turing I know the mathematician of ability 
<laughs> Never mind that. Okay, so it's wait. Did I just okay? This is done. This is done. Let's move on. Yeah, I'm getting sleepy now. Before I go out. Oh. Wait, did I copy it? Okay. Nice. Okay. Ah. Hey, ten more to go, and we're done. We're almost there. Forty-seven. Late orders versus total orders fixed decimal. So now for the percentage late orders, we just value like we should. But we, but to make the output easier to read, let's cut the percentage orders of two digits to the right decimal point. I was thinking about it anyway. So I guess. Uh, <coughs> I should. Uh, there, there is a rounding function maybe. Uh, most of the time, uh, the the way I do this with money, especially with money, is I do a convert to decimal points with a specific fixed values and and call it a day. So I'm going to be that. Okay. Okay. Late order. So so ba it's basically the same query. Oh my God, this is coming an abomination now. It's the same query. I'm just going to convert this combination here. God, it's going to be ugly. Fine. Convert. I'm going to convert all this. Okay. I'm going to convert all this. Get. Uh, decimal wait a minute now the definition comes first I just do this wait here there we go decimal uh yes this is fine This is fine, I guess. Is that it? Hi. Happened here. Oh, okay. Thank you. What is that? Of why does this is this mm. actually leave it as it is for the time being apply the convert to the actual calculation down here instead of trying to encapsulate all that inside the Is here. Is that it? There we go. Ugh. We're done. That's fine. Zero percent. There we go. Okay, a simple convert. And on the the way, finishing the book. Hey, God, we get out of this query now. There we go. Let's move on. To decimal. Oh, it was a simple decimal type. Thank you. Decimal. But she's using two on the 
side of the on the left side of the of the decimal point i i, I like to use a three two for money never mind even a, i i use depending if you are using mexican peso <laughs> i like to use 18 and comma two <laughs> because inflation you know never mind not the place all the time Let's do the next one. Okay. Post customer grouping. What do I need to do? Andrew Fuller, the VP of sales at Norwind, would like to do a sales campaign for existing customers. We like to categorize customers into groups based on how much they ordered in 2016. Then, depending on which group the customer is in, we will target the customer with different sales materials. The customer grouping categories are 0 to 1,000, 1,000 to 5,000, 5,000 to 10,000, and over 10,000. This is a classic problem with categories. So if the, oh wait, so if the total dollar amount of the customer's purchases purchases in that year were between zero and a thousand they will be in the low group customer with purchase from one and so on i guess medium high higher okay high value customer total order that's what we want a good starting point for this query is the answer from the problem high value customer total orders also we want to show customers who have ordered in 2016 okay okay first i'm going to look for this one here okay wonder if i can search but Why? My value cost found? You kidding me? Fifty three. Yes, this one here. So this is the query I'm going to be using as my starting point. What does it do? Uh, total amount after a certain amount. I need to group them. So, okay, starting point. Okay, uh, the year must be. Okay, let's remove some because. Okay, so to remove until 2006. Back to the one. Huh? In 2006. Okay, now I need to group them. But the result, the same thing from the query. And I'm going to be adding the customer group they belong to. How do I do this field here? Customer group. How do I do this? Okay, so I guess. This is obviously a sum, but I do have some grouping here. But in end, don't think I can actually just modify because I need to group them. Maybe no. we need the having calculate the total order amount. Okay, so I'm using a having clause here.
Wait a minute. I've been using ETE the entire time. With the hints. SQL to the phone. Okay. It's the same the same SQL query. You can use the both SQL. Yes. I was suspecting that. You can use this query as a CTE and use it in another one. The build on it using case statement. Total order. Well, that makes sense. Instead of grouping them. Because I could do that with having. That would be a mess. Yes, it could be easier with a case statement. Okay, so I'm going to encapsulate this within a CTE then. Okay. I almost forgot about this. With the name of the CTE as and the this CTE being called. Yes. There we go. Here is the CTE. I'm going to call you 2016 2016 uh, orders. Looks looks dumb. There we go. Two thousand. Oh wait, why? I guess I cannot begin with a no. Order city. Let's leave it like that. Okay, order city. I have the city. What are I going to be using this with? So, what feels, what feels, and customer ID, so I need the customer table, maybe not, I can get the customer ID from several tables. Uh, wait a minute, all this, just, come to, Customers, I already had all those tables. If I extract them, it I may get customer ID, company name, company name, and total order amount. I do have these fields ready. Format the code a little bit. Oh my God, looks awful. Good. It's better. Yeah. There we go. Joins here. Goodbye. Okay, so this is the CTE. So I'm getting these fields already. <coughs> so I can use I could just use them. That ID company name T total I. Do I need to? Total order amount. So, where are you getting this? work that order CTE total order amount why I not been able to use this okay yes I will get rid of this
I don't think that. Fine. To the back. Order by clause is invalid in no I remove it. I guess I should get rid of the having because I'm going to have this logic outside. Common table expression defined but not used. Oh wait, I didn't force. I didn't finish my select statement. Uh, yes. E order city. There we go. God, I did remove some things here. Not really sure. The having is got to go because I'm going to be grouping them anyway. So I, I cannot filter them here right now. I will not filter them before getting to the query. Okay, so let's again. Customer ID comprehending total order amount. Now, wait a minute. Now I only need customer. So here is where the complexity becomes here. Case. But I don't remember. Case. Okay, syntax very well. Where an expression one, wait, no, this is the syntax. Okay. Here we go. Okay, syntax case input expression when when expression and then the results. Samples here. There we go. <coughs> case when expression here. This is going to be a field. So I'm going to be comparing the value here. I'm going to be comparing the total order amount in the case. And re uh, depending on what range it is, I'm going to be writing medium, low, high, very high. Those are the ranges. Here are the conditions here. Okay, it seems simple and seems uh, simple enough from zero to one thousand. Okay, let's do that. So we have a case. I need to use parentheses there. No, it doesn't have parentheses. And let's remove those. And uh, when here? Yes. Just this is now the range equals to zero and oh. this is this is like the like the dates that samples I've been doing. Um, I could just use a between for this, I guess. And zero, and thousand, then, and I return something here. And 
I need to add a name? Has the rank or something like that? Customer group as group. There we go. Getting nulls because I'm not considering everyone else. It actually works. So copy paste everything. Why is yellow? Copy paste. Now is from one thousand and one. A new range and uh, wait, one thousand to five thousand. Oh no, zero to one thousand, one thousand five thousand. One thousand and one and five thousand. I guess you're going to be medium. There we go. And we repeat everything for uh high and very high. Okay. I to five thousand two and here now five thousand to ten thousand five thousand and one ten thousand you're five there we go we are only uh, missing the very high category here I don't have a range I guess so very high but I'm not going to be using this just going to be saying if the total order amount is over 10,000 got very high that bro over 10,000 will be low medium And the filter is already there for the year because it's, it's actually inside the CTE. That's it. I think I just did it. Uh, Alfred, okay. So there we go. Okay, so we 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 did it. Fine it to the repo we're almost there oh god i want to fill let's just push it to the limit okay we're almost done just finish it okay what else this is going to be a really long video holy crap i don't think anyone is actually clarity okay 49 you have here 49 customer grouping fix no customer grouping fix no what do i need to do? There is a problem with the answer for the previous section. Customer group value for one of the rows is null. Which one? Fix the SQL so that there are no nulls on the customer group. What are you talking about? Better recall, nice on Dino. What are you talking about? Total output is still 81 rows. But here we are only showing the row which had no customer group value. Why? Oh, well, that's actually true. I going to need but I don't have nulls on my answer here. Let me see. 
Don't have any null. Oh, wait, there is one. It's right. Why? God, because it's decimal. Yeah, he's right. I didn't realize. She's right. What happens? What happens if this? I'm doing something crazy here. I cannot do this. Why? When I have to do. Fix the SQL that there are no nodes in the team is telling me using between was well for integer values. However, the value we're working with is money. It has decimal. Instead of something like this, I need instead of using between, I need to use the actual uh, greater than equals operator. Oh, God damn it. Okay, hey, never mind then. Let's uh, let's fix this really quickly. Yes. And to yeah, I need. And. This equals less than and equals uh, then does that work? Seems to be working. Let's try to fix the five thousand one. Yes. Yes. All this that we go and less than or equals this should do it right no because it's five thousand and Dot two, so it's actually outside this. I could just type it here, like the between the statement. This, the next range. Now it should work. Eh? Guess this could work. But I think I need to check out my. I'm doing this from zero to a thousand, including the thousand, to do the same thing. Still not working. Why? It should be medium. But no, it should be high. Will be high now. <coughs> this oh wait a minute. Yeah, but because of this obviously. There we go. There we go. So you are high now. And it's still getting problems though. Believe it. Okay. Oh wait no, it's okay. It's fine here. You are greater than uh, a thousand. You are very high. It's finished. There we go. Whew. I didn't realize that that was a nasty bug right there. For attention again. What? No.
Yes, need. But I just fix it. Basically, I'm just too lazy to get back all the way. <sighs> Forget it. Not worth it. Okay, never mind. In it. Okay, it's okay. Okay, eighty-one rows. One rows, no nulls. Hey, perfect. Uh, Fifty. We're almost there. We're almost done with the book. Fifty. Customer grouping with percentage. What I need to do? Based on the above query, show all the def all the defined customer groups and the percentage in each. In each, sort by the total in each group in descending order. Based on the above query, so all the defined cost groups and the percentage in cut that medium. So I guess most of the people are there, 42% medium. 20 4 percent so okay the starting point you can use the answer from the problem customer group in fixed norm this is the this one here the previous one okay fixed norm hint we no longer need to show the customer id company name final output however we need to count how many customers in are in each customer grouping you can create another CTE level in order to get the counts in each of the customer grouping for the final output. Oh, it's another CTE. Okay, let's take it. Hit customer group and total percentage in group. Okay, okay. Customer grouping. This one? Okay. There we go. Before I forget. <laughs> okay, so what now? Going to need. Okay, let's just begin removing some fields here. Going to need I don't think this is going to do anything wrong here. Need to remove these two. Customer group group and to leave there we go. Total amount and customer group. That's the first two. Group and uh, total group and weight. Order amount. Here, here we are customer groups. I guess I'm going to need to actually out outside group them so I'm going to group by I just uh, use this uh, fuck this how do I because I cannot just copy and paste all this right here. Why? Yeah, okay, let's think. Wait a minute.
the book says okay we don't need that we need now how many customers in each customer grouping you can create another CTE level it says level it's not really another CTE or, or is it in order to get the counts each customer grouping for the okay because in each customer grouping let's create a CTE call uh, customer grouping What I going to be doing there? I going to need. I need to count. Actually, remove this logic here. I actually need to remove that logic there. Going to need customer group. How many are there here? And the the percentage calculation in the at the end is quite easy. I already did it in a previous exercise. What I really need is this, and the the second number is the total amount of of um, of orders. Yeah. Okay. Okay, how many customers are in each customer group? This is the first thing that the city. Any customer? Okay, let's create the the base. Going to do it like this. The e. Customer grouping. Yes. Okay. Happening. But as expected, I. Then using two CTEs, separate them. There we go. Comma. Oh, wait. No, I don't. Let's uh, wait again. Okay. Uh, customer grouping CTE. Hmm. What do I need here? I need to move the logic from grouping up here. Maybe. Let's try to run this. Just as. No, because customer. Okay, so here I get thing. Let's let's begin some doing something here. Okay. I cannot say this. From Actually, taking into consideration order CTE, I can actually query uh, the order CTE inside another CTE. That's actually really useful. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to need that. That's what it meant. Can create another CT level. That's what it meant because I can query the order C. Okay, now that's the thing is 
sense here. Okay. Okay. So I can query the order CTE inside this grouping CTE. What do I do now here? I need to get how many? Need to get how many? How many? Of yes. Need the customer. What I need. Customer group. Okay. Customer group. This is going to be here. Yes, I do this. Because I'm getting all the. Yes? This is something the end. I can do this. And I? I guess I can. Can I run? This is uh, going to be removed anyway. Yes, okay, let's try to run that. My group no longer exists, obviously. Oh, wait a minute. Customer group. Your name. If I do this, going to get them like that. They are not group by. Hmm. Need to group them. Need to group them. And not add okay I have the customer group this is going to be returned here I need to remove this customer group customer group in city dot where is customer group Wait a minute. Uh, group. Oh no, never mind. Uh, I, uh, then why not able to cast it here? Multipart will not be bound. Bound. Why? It will not be bound. Why? Doing something wrong here. Okay, I cannot say this because. Yes, it should be. Need to add it here. change it this customer group in CTE and now it's going to work now but then how do I recover the information uh, I don't need to because I already get it from here order CTE is here by extension getting it here too when I call customer group in CTE 
Now I need to group it. And I guess I could group by this field. Wait. So I'm going to uh, collapse all these mediums, lows, and very highs into a single uh, record. There we go. Now I need the amounts. Okay, we're doing we're getting somewhere here. How the hell am I going to get fields? Okay, I got the customer group. Need the total in group amount. That's going to be an aggregate function. Okay, okay, okay. So here it's going to be field. Why? tabs okay so the customer group i do have it i need the count i need to know how many highs lows and medium very highs are there so count just going to count there we go yeah, let's let's get an alias there. Yeah. Okay, this seems to be like a normal query so far. Total in group. Go twenty. Medium thirty five. Descending order, or by the total in each group, descending order. Let's do that. Order by the same field. Okay. Descending order. There we go. Uh, wait a minute in each group in descending order yeah. 35 medium 20 low why is not doing it so i need to put the order for the grouping oh what like Wait a minute. Total in group. Copy pasting things I know. Uh, there we go. 35. Copy pasting is a really bad habit. You put very too much attention to it. As that said. Uh, yeah, 25, 20, and 15. Now, all I need to do is calculate the percentage in group. Percentage. Okay, so that's the last field. So I'm going to be using total in group and the max amount. Yes. Uh, oh, I actually did get this for there. I already got this previous exercise. Here? There we go. Copy this. There we go. Because I'm lazy. Does this actually work just like that? Okay, let's. Well, of course not. 
I'm not looking for the specifics in the skills. I just want the formula. So instead of using this, oh, what happened if it's late order? No, 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 it is from another place. Uh, just need to capture uh, total in group. I wonder if I need to. Oh, it's already. It's already a decimal. Yes. Replace all of the this parenthesis. Now, totaling group divided by one to places and multiply the total order CT total orders. I'm going to get percent. Got a bit more, really. The field. Percentage. Percentage in group. Valid total in group. Right. Okay. Okay. I guess I could just uh, just count again. Only and only a day, I guess. And the total order city me. Total order amount. Total order city. Order city. Have this one. Yeah, you cannot resolve this. How many are there? You already have it. Total in group. Okay, that's the count. Just need to know how many are there. Not use another count here. Directly. But I can actually do a sub query here and just count how many records this on the key maybe. Oh my god. Yes. Can use the same customer grouping CT. Yes, makes sense actually. Customer going to give me count of how many are they. It this doesn't matter really. What I actually looking for is how many. Uh, of these are in total, so I'm basically assuming 35 plus 20 plus plus 13 plus 13 again. This is the total amount. So that's what I'm interested in from this customer grouping CT. And now I do have the percentage here. 843, 24, 60. Yes, that's it. Oh my God. Oh, we're almost done. Been saying that for a couple of hours, couple of hours now. Just this white space here. Man, really having a hard time solving this last ones.
Oh wait. I need to add this to the repo. Okay, let's add this to the repo. Let's move on. 51. Customer grouping flex. Let's see what's not. Okay. Customer. Oh, wait. Customer grouping flexible. What do I need to do here? Andrew from VP of Sales is uh, still thinking about how best to group customers. Define low, medium, high, very high value customers. Now wants complete flexibility in grouping the customer based on the dollar amount they have ordered. He doesn't want to have to edit SQL in order to change the boundaries of the customer group. Then how are you supposed to do it then? How would you write the SQL? There's a table called customer group threshold. I, do, uh, I didn't even know that it says that we need to use. Use only orders from 2016. Okay, let's check out this table. Customer group threshold. There we go. It's customer group thresholds in plural. Do you have here? There we go. Okay, so I guess that some kind of application is going to edit these rows. And that means that, oh God, I need to use these fields in my query, this table instead of just typing it directly inside the sql so that's what it meant i am still using sql anyway okay customer group name low mid range bottom range top okay uh, pretty straightforward here's a call okay this is uh, the expected result so instead of using my own uh, Ranges, type it down directly there. I should be using this table here. This table here, I should. Okay, let's, let's think about this a little bit. I guess I'm going to be using my previous uh, result. The expected result are the same for the original problem. It's just that we are getting the answer di differently. The, the total rows return will still be 81. We're just showing a subset here. Hint. As a starting point, use the SQL as the first CT from the problem. Okay, just the first CT. Customer grouping with percentage. Okay. The previous one? Yeah, the previous one. So I'm going to be using this here. I'm going to be ignoring this one here. And the query is going to be pretty much, I guess it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Yet, the difference is going to be that I'm not going to be using the customer grouping CTE. That, I'm going to delete that, I'm going to be using another table so i guess this is going to be a join me hmm. actually everything is here look at this as a starting point okay so here is the CTE. When thinking about how to use the table customer group threshold, note that when joining a, to a table, you don't need to only use an equijoin. In the join, you can also use other operators such as in B. Oh, okay. So instead of using the equal sign on the join, because that was my question, how I going to include the between statements uh, during the join so I can actually do that 
it's not that hard i think okay so i can actually during the join statements and i believe that i'm going to be using fields instead of actual values so the join is going to be uh, instead of a, a large case going to be using a single join sentence so let's try this out okay after this one here join the customer groups thresholds as customer groups threshold okay on customer groups threshold dot and here is where i'm going to need to think i guess no no i'm wrong here i need customer group ct dot wait what is no no I'm, I'm wrong i need the total in group in group i need the amount I need the total order amount to know where to go. Where is the total order amount? Damn it. It's down here inside the CTE. Dot total order amount. There we go. Now what? Cool put the between statement here i guess actually now use the fields on the customer uh grouping thresholds dot the range bottom and the same the same ct the ct dot Range top. Do I need to do something else? Here? The grouping is already there. Something is for invalid. I need to do something Oh, okay. I cannot group it by this anymore. I need to group it by something. Valid customer grouping CT. Customer. Oh, of course, it doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, I need to remove that maybe. I'm going to need customer ID. Company name. Customer ID, company name. Customer ID Company name What else do I need? Total order amount I already have that too Total order amount Finally The grouping I think Customer group name Wait. This comes from There we go. Okay. Obviously because I just remove it. Just commented. It's a it's an order statement, so it's not a big deal. is going on up until here okay let's give it some space <coughs> <coughs> 
Okay, no group by. I need to group them too. Okay, so I guess I could group them by the customer group thresholds and and some the customer group name maybe. Customer group name. Do I need to actually group this thing? Got an invalid name here. Customer group it C. Custom. Oh, wait, here. No, they're not being used anymore. I only using the order seat. I could remove this now. I need to. It's not ambiguous here, I think not. I can remove that too. Okay. Oh my god, thank you. What's missing this? Copy pasting, guys, you know. Need to put attention to what are you actually copy pasting. Okay, so uh, I was assuming I was doing something wrong. I didn't know where until I read this. Okay. So the exception helped me find out where I was. Wait a minute. Uh, okay. Yet. Okay. Is ordered by something? Yes. Seems to. Customer ID, maybe? Alphabetical order? Same thing. Thing is done. Ana Trujillo, Antonio Moreno. Yeah, it's done. I guess it's that's it. Ah, getting really slow so solving to solving this. Ah, how many are there left? Mm -hmm. Fifty one. Okay, what else? 52. Contrib with suppliers and customers. Contrib with suppliers and customers. Okay. What do I need to do? Uh, some Norwegian employees are planning a business trip and would like to visit as many suppliers and customers as possible. For their planning, they like to see a list of countries where suppliers and customers are based. Better results. Argentina, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Finland. Use the union statement for this. A good way of putting together a simple resource set for multiple SQL statements. Okay, uh, I guess. Considering you have the same amount of fields, in this case it's just one. Yeah, I guess. Uh. I guess let's uh, give it a shot. Check out the union syntax. Union 
all query specification another query specification and i do remember i do recall that you need that both queries return the same uh, amount of fields in the same order and with the same data types in, uh, in the order so it's not so simple okay Drop table there we go here are the two queries need two tables here and to union this where's the result it's quite simple actually okay so in this case So I basically going to create a new table okay with suppliers and customers so let's do a simple query let all suppliers and select all on customers Suppliers and customers. So if I execute this one, I get all the suppliers. Execute this one, I get all the customers. I only going to need the country in both tables. <coughs> Here we go. Here we go. But now. going to unite them union Is that it okay so we have one query here we have another one here the union that's it then you solve in australia Austria version is done yeah it's actually done by country the as well as the last one okay it's like it's already done nice that was pretty simple thank you Only thing is that I'm not getting duplicates here. It's a union, so I guess I guess uh it's considering these two as a single table. So duplicates are going to be considered a single entry. Okay, it's really nice. Simple exercise in the end. Very well, welcome. Okay, again. Let's add it to the repo. But I'm hungry now. We need to take a bath too. Eight hours. We're almost done. 54. Fifty-four countries with suppliers and customers, version three. Oh my god, no! I hate that exercise already. Yeah, the output of India above practice problem is improved. So this is still not ideal. What we really like to see is the country name, the total of suppliers and the total of customers. Ah, damn. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Ah, damn it. Okay. End be able to use the answer from the previous problem and make a few changes uh, to the CTE source okay where is to show the total number of supplier countries and customer countries won't be able to use the same keyword anymore <laughs> I didn't use a distinct keyword here okay when joining the two CTEs I, I guess that is the actual solution to that 
was really more complex to, to what I did here. Uh, but it actually works just like that. I don't know. Maybe I I I I think I'm missing a lot of things here. I don't think that's is giving me the answer though. Look at this. Oh no, wait. He's referring to the CTEs. When joining the two CTEs together, you can also use a computed column with this null function to show non-null country field. Yeah, because uh, this zero here is going to be actually a null value. So I need to change this uh, from a null value to a zero. Okay, so so far so good. Let's let meeting. Okay. A computer field with this null function. I already did this in a previous exercise. Okay. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look. So I need to do Okay. Wait, wait a minute. This is not in fifty two. No, I need to move to fifty three. Okay, let's back. I am in fifty two. Ah, okay, this is a previous step. Okay, normal. Head of my I really want to finish. Okay, so Countries with suppliers or customers. The employees going on the business trip don't want to just a row list of countries. They want more details. Like to see output like the below in the expected results. So buyer country in all. Oh, okay. So this is the, the previous step. Okay, okay, okay. So we have buyer country, customer country. Okay, distinct or group by to avoid the country. Okay, okay. Okay. So I guess here. There we go. You can combine these with a CTs or the tables. Note that there is a specific type of outer join you will you will need designed to return rows from either resources. The left join, I guess. Either resource. Oh no, we, the the left and the right. What is it? The type of outer join. I guess it's uh, the the infamous full outer join. So I can get the null values on the left and the null values on the right from both cities. Okay, so let's think. So first, we are going to create. Two CTEs, one for each query here. Copy this one here. Now semicolon with call it the no. Flyers underscore CT. Oh wait, it's very small, so back. Then put it like this. Now oh wait. There we go. Was missing that I guess. And customers. Customer city as 
and query here. There we go. Uh, I'm missing something. That's it. I just need a, a query, I guess. The let asterisk from. Okay, that was it. Let everything from what? Okay. Need the supplier CTE showing the results here. Customer CTE showing the results on. Okay, so let's try something simple here. Right. Country on the supplier city. And customer city, the country from the and that's it, I I guess that's it. Wait a minute. From what? That's the question, dude. Uh, I guess the, the supplier city first. No, it work. Need to buy the outer join. Full outer join. Number, okay. This is going to return every single uh, row from the first table and the second table, including the nulls. So I just need to do the full outer join with the, with the second CT. So full outer join from the customer CT as uh, just as it is on flyer ct dot country will be equals to my uh, customer ct dot country and this should give me the answer obviously i'm going to get uh repeating groups here i mean uh I'm going to get duplicates. I can fix that quickly with the stent. Wait, what? Okay, uh, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, I got the result already. Oh, perfect. Nice. Okay. I'm on 50. Okay, the spectral result is null, Argentina, I think is order. Most of the time these problems are order. We like to see up like this. Better results, I guess, is supplier country and customer country. Okay, so let's order them. Order by supplier CTE dot country and customer CTE dot country. Oh, I'm getting this. Let me see. Getting the null first. Maybe desk. No, it doesn't make sense to. Because even though. Yeah, no, it doesn't make sense. How are you getting this? Perhaps it's not actually order. getting it ordered anyway i guess the id is actually ordering it's actually ordering this uh these result sets for me i don't i'm not really sure i guess it's okay maybe it's because i'm getting okay let's see supplier country goes first have that as
And I guess Summer Summer Country Flyer Country Argentina Austria Argentina Australia Tom's Austria Australia comes Okay, never mind I guess it's a uh, kind of of ordering it anyway I guess I, I'm doing fine here, never mind that The results are correct, so that's what it matters I guess that I'm going to be uh, Removing the null and adding the amount next. So let's move on. Okay. Shift insert. If that's fine. Fifty four. Oh, God. Almost done. Version three. The output in the about practice problem is improved, but this is still not ideal. We'll, we really like to see if the country name, the total suppliers, and the total customers. Better result, country name, total suppliers, and total customers. You should be able to use the answer from the previous problem and make a few changes to the CTE source. Okay, where is to show the, the total number of supplier countries, customer countries, you won't be able to use the distinct word keyword anymore. Joining the Two CTEs together, you can use a computed column with the null function, okay, to remove the null value. Okay, anyway. so okay, it's not really that different from the previous one, especially if I already build enough from this one here. And the hint already told me that I need to change the, uh, this, this one here, this code here. And this one here, I believe. So I need to add some uh, some some more fields down here. I guess the total amount. The total amount of total suppliers and total customers. We're going to set here. Total hires to be equals to account function and I think that's it. Wait a minute, I'm using an aggregate uh, an aggregate function here. I want to be forced to put by country I guess. Oh, thank you. I need to repeat the same thing down here. Need need total customers want to be false. The aggregate function count and on the customers table and let's remember to group by country avoid uh, an exception here by trying to use an aggregate function here without group by okay so i guess that's what i'm going to use to get the fields i'm not going to be able to use this 
more and the fields I'm going to be using down the country name and I'm getting from the buyer CTE the total suppliers and the total customers from customer city okay so country okay that's done need the first fields country no, I cannot do this anymore okay not going to be there country which one a good question oh wait look at this i'm getting two country fields i believe this is going to be a problem because both fields are country Not marking anything. There we go. I'm big. I'm big. Okay, it's ambiguous. I could just rename them here. I guess. Flyer country. Customer country. Okay. Flyer country. Customer. customer customer country invalid name supplier con why oh of course i actually i may remove all of this buyer country Customer country. Be done with it. Uh, invalid column name supplier country where. These are unique names. Supplier city. Customer city. Do I put the. Yes. I don't think it's required. Fire City. Wait a minute. I just pasting things here. Let's think. Supplier country. From the supplier city. Let's remove this one here. Let's remove this one here. Okay, there's a mistake there. These are unique names. They should work directly here. Yet, invalid call, it doesn't know what it is. Why? Flyer CTE, Flyer CTE. I already has this field here. Fire country. Okay, let's think. Come down here. Valid column. They don't it says why. What sits here? I'm missing something. What it is? Okay, let's see. Think. I guess I could just uh, add this the definition here. Just to make sure that it actually finds it. Uh, 
Where is it? Oh my god, I really stuck here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. It's okay. Country. No, this is fine because it's, the country field belongs to the customer size table. Uh, I guess it's fine. Wait a minute. I cannot do this. Need to. Yeah, I cannot do that. Uh, okay. No. There we go. Now it finds it. Oh, wait. Yes. And use an alias here to avoid uh, confusion. More. More confusion. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Finally. So the thing was that. I did rename these country fields to avoid uh, ambiguity, but uh, I didn't do anything here. I was still grouping by the actual name of the field here, the country, the suppliers table, and I was just using a, 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 some kind of uh, a field here with, that didn't exist on the, on the table, so that was my problem. I, I wasn't thinking straight. Okay, not mine. Okay, so we have the supplier country and the uh, customer country. Wait a minute. Oh no. I need to show the country. I am version 3 right now. 43. 53. I am 53 right now. What the hell? And it, oh my god, I'm getting confused really bad. 53, 54, you should be 55. I am. You'll be in 54. Doing 54 right now? Oh my god, this mouse is killing me. I think I should let's check out this. Git log. I am on fifty four. I should be doing fifty four right now. Before we'll be able to use the answer for. I need the country, the total suppliers. Okay, I can just remove this one. Everything seems to be the same. Need to remove this one. What is happening? Okay. Oh, I see. If. I just copy the stuff up. There we go. This two. There we go. Okay. Confusion. Remove. I guess I just copy pasted more than I uh, needed. So never mind. Okay, never mind. Let's continue. Here. Uh, where was I actually? Okay. Going to need the country, total suppliers, and the total customer. Okay. So I guess I can just. This a country. Country.
because this the y from I just do this only from here just to be sure okay we're doing fine here values problem here Okay, let's move on for the time being. I'm going to need total suppliers and total. Suppliers. And total customers. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Problem is, I need this country is null because I'm using the supplier's country but if I use the customers the customer city dot country now I can clearly see this okay this is Argentina has three customers no suppliers at least not on this record here I look for uh, I need to f join these two together here how do I do that okay we're getting somewhere here okay so the last part of the query I just need to join these two fields into one get rid of the null values wait because this must be zero and these two fields should be just one how do we do that okay. uh, well uh, let's work with these two there is a there is no uh, function <coughs> It's going to be used here. If this value is null, just put a zero. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. I don't think that's a, a debate there. We get a null value, just without zero. So that's that, that's uh, that's it. I need to add an alias. Now total suppliers. Yes. To, uh, suppliers. <clears throat> and total customer so the last part is already done i need to get these two from one together how do i do that a, a union maybe that's that's, that's a, a stick one up upon the other we'll be that. Leave me Let me see. Countries with suppliers and hmm. we are almost there. How do I get this single? We'll make a function, but that's not the way. Wait a minute. We check the data. Every single. I don't see loss of the join. Obviously, I'm not going to see null value. The shippers country, in the suppliers country, and a null value in. The customer con I'm never going to see that join. I always going to get I always going to get 
null value on one side and then another one. We actually be able to use the use. Can I do this? However, I don't because I could use the is null the is null function here. This shows zero, for example, is not going to work. But what if I just change the field? Instead of zero, show me the other one. There we go. Okay. So I may actually need just to remove one of the. Wait a minute. What happens is the other way around, like this here. No. Because if I remove this, let's, uh, let's comment it out. Of course, if I remove the, the second field, I never going to know this, the null value here, never. I going to get null values here still, but if I remove the field, this one here is my list. That's it. I just need to put a, an alias here. Country, oh my God, yes. And there we go. That's it. Uh, I just get rid of the second country. I don't need it. I already have this one here. And the data is doing the work for me. Oh, okay. <coughs> Lord. My God, we're almost there. We're almost there. What if ah, I about to drop this and leave it for tomorrow? Well, you're so close. Fifty-five. Only three more, and we're done. Three more, and we're done. 55 first order in each country please be easy a 55 please be an easy one first order in each country seems like something different looking at the orders table we like to show details for each order that was the first in that particular country. Order by order ID, of course. So for each country, we want one row. That row should contain the earliest order for that country with the associated ship country, customer ID, order ID, and, and order date. That results. This is my country, and this is the information of the first, of the first order. Okay. Hint. Your first step will probably be create a query like this. Here's the query. Select ship country, blah 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 blah. The order date, just to show the date. From orders, order by ship country and order ID. Seems pretty straightforward. Which shows all the rows in the order table sorted first by ship country and date by order ID. Your next step is to create a computed column that shows the row number for each order. Partition appropriately. There is a class of functions called window functions or ranking functions you can use for this problem. Oh my god, more research. I specifically use the row number function with the over and partition clause to get to the 
to get the number per country on a particular order. So I'm going to be using this to find out who is row number one. Okay, I need to do something like this. Row number per country. Row number over partition by ship. So here's the syntax actually. Because of some limitation with Windows function, can't directly filter the computed column created above. Then why is creating it? Use a CTE to solve the problem. Okay, so I guess I should copy all this. Where am I? Okay, again. I guess I should create a CTE with uh, I don't feel like naming something right now and yes with right there we go. Okay, let's put attention here. I did just so. Code. Code. Just awful. Okay. Why is doing this? Looks it looks just awful. Okay. Equals. There we go. So I got a CTE. So what now? Uh, I guess I could try it from the CT. See what happens. Okay, so I can see here the row number already, and the the number one. This one. Here, okay. it's showing me even more from the same country. I can make a where here where row number country one, and this should show me just the, the this one. That's it. That it. Okay, I guess that's it. Instead of this, I guess to remove the asterisk and just put the, the field names moving this one here. Country custom. Okay, yes. That's it. There we go. Just going to remove view, the query, and be done with it. Uh, okay, let's check out shift country customer ID, order ID, and order date. That's it. Nice. It was quick because uh, I was given the CT code, so I didn't write this. So yeah, so I just copy pasted. I haven't even read it yet. Row number country, so here is the function. Row number over partition by if country or by. I don't understand this. I really need to read the documentation for this. I'm going to do it later because I really want to finish. Let's finish this then. Save it into the repo. <coughs> Ok, 
Okay. How much time do I have here? Really hungry now. Okay, two exercise left. Almost there. Customers with multiple orders in a five day period. Multiple orders in a five day period. What do I need to do? There are, oh wait, there are some customers for whom freight is a major expense when ordering from Norway. However, by batching up their orders and making one larger order instead of multiple smaller orders in a short period of time, they could reduce their freight costs significantly. Oh my god. Show those customers who had made more than one order in five day period. The salespeople will use this help customer will use this to help customers reduce their freight costs. Okay. Note there are more than one way of solving this kind of problem. For this problem we will not be using window function. Okay. Better result. Customer ID initial order initial order date next order id next order date and dates between orders so we are basically showing two orders in a single row and information among them okay. some rows were not included total should be 71 you can use a self join with two instances of the orders table joined by customer ID obviously so we can actually show in a single row two orders joined by customer ID good naming for the table aliases are important for readability don't name them order one and order hence select initial order so here's the naming Here is the actual query. This is a good start. You will need to filter on additional fields. Join clause between the order order because as it is, this runs far too many orders. Has was called Cartesian product between the two instances. Oh yeah, it's going to get two. This means that for the total number of orders for a particular customer in orders, you have that number square square in the output. Uh, yeah, it's going to multiply it by square. Look at some of the order ID and order date values in order <coughs> and next order. Okay. Should the order ID the next order ever be less than or equal the order ID of the initial order? Based on the hint above, we added a WHERE clause. So this is the actual right one. Okay. Order by order customer order ID. And in this filter, and has cut down the output a lot. However, we still need to filter for the five day period. Create a new field called days between. Calculates the number of days between. Okay. Initial order day. Oh, wait. Initial order day and the next order. The day this function. This is a really long one. You now have a line like. It is. Initial order. Order date. Next order. Use this calculation in the WHERE clause to filter the for 5 days or less between orders. 57. Let's get back a lot. This is a really big one. There are some customers who write is a major experience. Let's, let's check this out.
they already, uh, the author is already giving me uh, two good main queries to start on. This is the first one. This is the other one. Yes, I should be working with this. Let me try to make easier for me the lead and pasting. Is the code? So this should be my starting code. Control Alt L. Let's try that. Okay. So this is the initial query. It's giving me this. There is a lot of information here. Okay. So far so good. So we have this is starting point now. So my question would be about the including multiple instances. Initial order ID must be the initial order ID orders on the order state. Okay, so this is actually naming correctly. And the next order is the same table, it's the orders table, but this is the next order. Okay, it's doing the join. A lot of work has been done here already. I just we need to just uh, read correctly see what is going on here so we are casting a select from the orders table and I uh, she's adding here the initial order alias so I can actually uh, call out for the same fields the order ID and the order ID so this is basically known in the world of databases as a as a sales join. So you are picking up one table and you are uh, giving that table an alias and joining them, joining the table with itself, with another alias. So you're basically doing a join with just one table. You're working with that as uh, you are working with uh, a different table. It's pretty much the same. It's just a join with one, with one single table with different alias names. So far so good uh, with initial order initial order okay must be less than the next order so the initial order cannot be the next order of the next order that makes sense and order by customer id and in order id What needs to be done? The order ID. Use this. And what are you actually missing? But the results. Ah, I need the days between orders. Some formatting for the dates. We can do that. Let's let's do that the convert date because that's easy. Let's convert the dates. Call date. Oh wait, no. I want to convert you to a date. Value to convert to date is the there we go. X1. Okay, this is easy. Convert as date, and this is the value I want to convert. Here we go. 
Okay, so initial order date and okay, so how is this? Okay, so initial order date. Next order E. Now I need to calculate days between orders. Okay, looks like oh wait a minute. Getting duplicates here all over the place. Uh. Can I actually use them? This one? No. Order. Because the next order, okay, okay, forget about that. Uh, it's going to be complicated. Okay, so Well, let's try to add the next order dates. Okay, let's uh, call days between orders. Okay. Days between orders is going to be equals to. Uh, I could get the difference between these two dates already. The difference, yes, the difference between these two dates is with a date def. Yes, it's going to be days. The dates. The first date is going to be initial order. Wait order date by that and next order date that is not working out oh doesn't know what it is I guess I need this paste it here copy that Paste it here. That is recorded with me. Nice. Nine. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It's actually giving me the dates amount, so we're not that far away. I guess I only need to filter this correctly on the where clause. It's actually giving me the dates between orders. Okay. So what else do I need to do? Can I call this? I don't think so. And do you know what that is? How many days were there? Were five days? Five day period. Okay. equals five damn it doesn't know what that is i have to place this for all of this great there we go oh my god oh, horrible there we go okay so it's showing me the day, the five day period here. <coughs> Done. Hmm. Okay, let's check out. And turn three. Oh my God, I'm done. 
Herzbergs. Uh, and done. Okay. Well, to give it credit, I took pretty much most of the work was already done when I just copy and pasted it here, the query. So I cannot really say that I actually uh, did this from the ground up. Never mind. I'm so tired now that I don't really care. Okay, so I guess I'm just one exercise away. Finishing this, let's do the final one. 57 customers with multiple orders in a five day period version two. Uh, no, not again. Okay. There is another way of solving the problem about using window functions. We would like to see the following results. Same team, basically. Not the same team, just order date and next order date is between. It's the same thing, I think. The same thing? The window function to use here is the lead function. Look up some examples of the lead function online. Here's a step write SQL using the lead function to return results like the following. The next order date is a compound column that uses the lead function. Okay, I, I don't know. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. It is a null here, but there is no order. There is no next order. And you'll have something like this, okay? Next order, they convert date, and here is the lead function. This, this is the important one. Lead order date one over. That is my customer ID. Okay, so I guess I should I should study this function here. Yet for the time being, I'm just gonna copy it. I I actually very tired of this. Much. Okay. I should have something like copy that last exercise. There we go. There we go. Did I affected everything? No anymore. Okay, let's see. So, customer ID, order date. So the important thing is this line here. Calculation of the next order date. What does what does this do? Okay, seems to be working. Now, take the output of this and using C and the date this function filter for rows which match our criteria. What criteria? Oh no, it's the same criteria. I don't need to. So basically, I'm going to encapsulate this inside a CTE, I guess. So my job is to encapsulate this inside a CTE, maybe. I don't think it doesn't make sense for encapsulate. I guess you'll just encapsulate this line here. I should get just the next order date as every.
Messed up. Get back a little bit. For the... I already had the query here. Query. Wait. Okay, let's get back. The original. Let's create empty CT. I'm going to use this there we go with this CTE he finishes here this is go Let customer D to date. Try to code again. There we go. Thank you. A little better, not too much. Okay, I do have a CTE here. Now what? What do I need to do now? Something this how do i use okay let's uh just do a simple select with the cte yeah try the cte what happened because ah okay of course i i cannot do this okay <coughs> It's already working. That's it. No. Customer ID. Customer ID. Order date. Next order the days between orders. I need to get days between orders. Okay, let's do this. I get the fields. No, wait, wait a minute. Do the add and Add something my liking here. Okay, so I may get the three fields and I need to add the days. This or those. Okay. But this is going to be equals what? Days between orders. I already have this. Wait a minute. It's here. Hey there. All this. I already have it. Of course not. Multiport identify. Oh, no, yeah, never mind. That doesn't exist. Of course. Uh, order date. Wait a minute. Referring to the same field. Next order. They finish filter five the same five days I'm getting a lot of uh, big ass I'm getting 94 only five five day difference
Yeah. Fine. There we go. Wait, just copy paste in at this point. Okay, let me see. Uh, yes, it will be inside. Hey, Div. This one here. Thanks to that one there. Oh, wait, never mind. Doing fine. I don't just copy this. Remove this thing here. Move back to the where. Because it doesn't exist actually. So, need to create a where clause here. And paste all that. So, this is my condition to fil filter the results. Oh, wait. But this. The order is important. There we go. I finish. Yes. It's the same result, so it's basically the same thing. Okay. Yes, I can just select everything. Uh, format everything and save everything there. okay that's it into yeah it's the same it's the same result so it is there we go nice i'm done with the book i guess This is going to be a long ass video. Really happy I finished. Okay. Log and there we go. Ah, look at this commit history. This a lot of time invested. Here. Hungry and tired. Well, yes, that was it. The last exercises, I really got a lot of help from the hints because the actual beginning query was there. It says, dear reader, thank you for purchasing the SQL practice problems and congratulations on completing the problems. I would be truly grateful if you could write a review on Amazon. I'm going to do that actually. As an independent author, I depend on the goodwill of my readers to help me share the word. The word. If you could write a few comments in a review, you will have my sincere gratitude. Interested in more SQL practice problems? No, not for today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to check this out later. I just got enough SQL problems for a weekend. I'm going to get in contact with her with the feedback. Uh, email here okay oh the answer section uh, never mind that i just don't have the energy for this well going to be okay uh what what did i do okay so i'm going to be uh finishing the git repo i'm going to be compiling this long ass video and upload it to YouTube. I believe it's going to take a long time just to compile the video. But never mind that. It's really, I'm really glad I just finished this. So, let's check out the branches. Okay, so let's move on to the master branch. Let's finish this. Let's check out the, the oh wait, check out the master branch. There we go, and now it merge the no fast forward option on the advanced problems. And um, everything seems fine to me, thank you. And now let's check out the commit history, my friends. Look at this. 
this was the point where I started with the introductory problems. The second video is the intermediate problems. And if you're watching this, I hope not. <laughs> Uh, these are the advanced problems. This has to be the longest video ever for myself at least. So, okay, so I'm going to be uploading the repository if you want. Um, that's it, I guess. Okay, let's uh, X delete the advanced problems branch. And never mind that. Everything's Everything is on the master branch now. Get here. I'm done. I'm going to be uploading this if you're watching this uh, later this week. Uh, send me an email. My email is uh, Jorge. Dot is, uh, Ricardo dot Escobar. I'm going to set it on the video description anyway. <sighs> I'm really tired. I'm going to get something to eat. I'm going to walk around. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to record a podcast later, actually, uh, with my reflections on this beautiful weekend, where I managed to not just read again a, a wonderful book, but actually do the exercises. I had to admit that those are really hard exercises. I I learned a lot of new things, uh, considering that I am a, a database administrator. Uh, most of my work is simple queries and most of these problems i if i haven't got the hints for the cte's i may never know they existed or how they work i still have a lot of things to learn because most of the code for the hard uh, for the hard exercises were given to me on the hints but never mind that i do believe that um uh, uh i do believe that it's, it's good enough i guess to know that uh, I was able to finish the, the exercises. As you can see, learning to code is really hard work. This is not easy for me. Even though I actually work as a database administrator, one may think that I may just breeze through all these exercises. The truth is that, that uh, most of the time you actually need to think slowly and type even slower to be able to solve these problems. Uh, I was able to do it and I feel very proud of myself at this point. And I hope you, uh, I hope you get a lot of luck and uh, a lot of time and and patience if you are planning to do something related to programming or coding in general. So thank you for coming and and see you later. Uh, I'm going to be adding uh, the, my podcast video here on YouTube too, so you are uh, free to join in. Uh, and thank you for coming. See you later.